News file is brought to you in association with MTN, everywhere you go, and Bank of Africa, as strong as a group, as close as a partner. Hello, a very good morning to you and welcome to News File. This is your most authoritative news analysis show. And on News File, we put Ghana first. Today on the show, 85 ministers so far, substance and necessary, or the president has soon abandoned the ideals of a modest, competent government and is overburdening the taxpayer with jobs for the boys, forgetting it is overspending with a kitty. That is leaking, thanks to NYEP or JEDA managers who are working free even after investigations, including one by National Security, indicted them of broad daylight corruption. Number two, the last time the Guinea fowl made the headlines in Ghana, a part of the country was up in flames, up north. This little bird is back in the news, provoking a scandal that can topple a government. But is the 15 million CD guinea fowl brouhaha a mischievous or misguided crusade in the name of protecting the public purse brought by a rash media and a gullible citizenry? But do the originators, how do they? Justify the 47 million CDs for a Guinea Fowls project and afforestation in the Sada zone. And finally, the historic election petition is the Supreme Court in violation of the Constitution by refusing to have the proceedings televised. And what are these fears about the implications of the outcome, any which way it goes? I am Samson Ladi Ayenini, and I welcome you to the show. We'll be right back after this break. Hello once again, and thank you for keeping your dials on Joy 99.7 FM. You're also listening to us on over a dozen affiliate stations across the country, including Love FM and Kumasi. And you're watching us on your Joy News channel on Multi TV. If you don't have a Digibox, you're missing out big time. Do get one so you can always join the discussion. And this show is always repeated at 9 uh, in the evening, so you can also catch up where you missed. I am Samson Ladi Anyenini. Your views, your comments, your questions are welcome. 1422 is a text line. You can also send me an email to newsfile at myjoyonline.com and we will share them with the rest of the world. I am joined in the studio by my guest. Uh, Nana Kumya is here, but will join us in a second. Abdul Malik Kwakubaku Jr., he is a regular panelist. He's here. He's the managing news editor of the New Crusading Guide newspaper. Good morning, Abdul Malik, and welcome yes. to the show. Um, Mutala Muhammad, he is the Deputy Information and Media Relations Minister designate. He also an MP. Good morning and welcome, and congratulations, my friend. All right, um, Ennis Thompson, he's a lawyer, and he certainly needs no introduction. He's here because we have a number of legal issues that we will look at. So it's good to have the lawyers in the seats. Thank you very much. Your first time on News File, is it? Yeah, I think so. All right. Thank, Thank you me. very much for joining us on the show. And as you know, I've introduced the three broad issues that we will look at for you. We'll look at the overview, uh, have an overview of the new appointments, the size of government, 
the old guards who appear to be missing out, and the new ones who are coming in. Necessary and competent individuals, or this is mere job for the boys, uh, where we have a leaking public purse. The Ministry of Sports overspending and almost everybody overspending. And also, we will bring you the story of Jeddah, or what you, are, uh, you know popularly as the National Youth Employment Program. There's been some alleged corruption at that place. And the allowances to those who work there have been frozen. The minister has given an order for a freeze until the issues are resolved. I'm sure you're aware of Manasi Azuri Awuni's report, extensive coverage of that issue on Joy FM and the expose. We are lucky also to have a man who was one of the coordinators of the program on the show, Motala uh, Mohammed. And um, we would also find time to talk about the uh, historic election petition. There are fears that the outcome could, you know, be greeted with some results. Outcome, whichever way, in favor of the president endorsing the position of the EC or reversing that position. The outcome might be disastrous. Is it exaggerated? Gabi Asari Ochirudako has some very interesting opinions to share on that issue. And my very good friend and uh, former and teacher, Ace Ankoma, thinks it is unconstitutional not to have uh, the whole of Ghanaians have the opportunity of seeing what goes on in that Supreme Court room. As far as these proceedings are concerned, it appears Kenya is beating us to it as far as our democratic credentials are concerned. Gentlemen, once again, good morning and welcome to the show. Now we start with the, the new appointments. Uh, it's good to start with you and uh, putting you in uh, an invidious position, I, I, I suspect. But Mutala, um, did you know about it? Were you expecting that you would be minister? Well, uh, something first and foremost, <laughs> let me say good morning to your cherished viewers and most especially the people of Nantong. Mm. Thanks to your GD box. <laughs> I think that there are a lot of people mm. who have the opportunity to, to view this. Uh, I, first and foremost, I, I also want to thank His Excellency the President for the confidence he reposed in many of us, particularly those of us mm. who are young, and the fact that Prof. Mills started that reposing some confidence in young people, I thought that His Excellency the President took you from what His Excellency Prof. Mills related did. I was not expecting any appointment. Mm. As a matter of fact, I went into an election uh, to be elected as a member of parliament, and I said this I guess on, on your platform and other platforms that haven't been elected as a member of parliament, I thank the people of Nantong for that. Any other thing that comes after, I consider it as, as a blessing. And I can only be humbled that such opportunity was. And I believe that my colleagues who have been given the opportunity to, to, to serve in various capacities mm. would say the same thing I'm saying here. The NDC has a pool of, 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 of expertise, if you like, several people who are more competent than we are. And if we are fortunate to be selected, you can only be humble and... and but that's and the point. That's the point. Depression. Your critics say that if you, if you can say that there are people there who are more competent than you are, then they are more deserving and they should be the ones be in there, not you. Yeah, I, I said competent mm. than we you are. You said I, more competent. Absolutely. Mm. I, I, can't, I can't be an arrogant of, of knowledge. Mm. And, and at any point in time, you would find people who are equally competent, people who are more competent. But as to whether in the vision of His Excellency the President, at any material moment he would want such people to participate in the governance. Mind you, a government is like a football team. Every football team has about 22-man squad. And when you are going to play, might you have a squad of 16, including either two reserve goalkeepers. But 11 players will play on the pitch. Now, while the 11 players play, some would start, some wouldn't, and others would be substituted, and others. So I think that uh, you can only, a player who would be able to play the 90 minutes is a player who has been able to do well, mm. and doing well, play in accordance with the team, if you like, of the coach. And in this case, the coach is His Excellency, 
the, the president. That is why I said that, yes, there are many people who are more competent than we are. But as to whether His Excellency the President would want them to, to be part of the team now, you know, that is left to him. I think that it is the prerogative but of You're being very sincere when you say that you didn't know about it, you didn't expect it, to, because we, we are told stories of some jostling, you know, for some of these positions. <laughs> Something I, I happen to have said even before this, that I never gave my CV to anybody, I never asked anybody to lobby. I said it on TV, I said it on radio. And this statement was occasioned when there were some controversies as to certain people appointed and others not appointed. I never asked anybody to lobby for me. At what point I did never. you get to know that you have been chosen? In fact, the very day, I, I didn't even know. You know, we had information that, oh, the list was going to be out, the last batch of ministerial appointments in Parliament. Mm. You know, it never came to us on Friday. Monday, you know, we sat on Monday because of this budget issue. Monday, we were told it would come. We never, in fact, I never knew until, in fact, I, I had a text message, but then my phone was off because we were in Parliament. Mm. Apparently, the executive secretary to the president sent me a text message. I didn't know. Somewhere around 10.30 to 11, around 11, thereabout, a journalist called me, called me and told me, Mutala, we just had a list and your name happened to be part of the, the list, the mm. names of, of, of list of deputy ministerial nominees. And that was when I got to know. So I asked him to, to read the names to me. I had no knowledge. I had no idea whatsoever. So I can only be humbled and thank his excellency. And pray that it's a huge challenge, particularly the ministry some of us are sent mm. to. It's a huge challenge and we would need the support of all of you. And thank God that I have a big, a big brother and a comrade and who has assured me his, his, his support. Okay. And, and my brother too. Even for, those of you, for those of parties. you who can see, he's tapping the shoulders <laughs> of uh, Abdul Malik Kubaku Jr. and also referring to uh, Nana Kumia, who <laughs> took his seat a while ago. Nana, welcome. Uh, Nana, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you, sir. All right, uh, let me go to Mr. Ernest Thompson. Um, from what he, he, the story he gives, most of them appear not to know until they have already been penciled, you know, for the job and they're about a minute to the announcement. And he's not alone in, in this story. I am aware of uh, some of the friends, those who have been uh, uh, appointed, who have similar stories to tell. Is that a good culture? Um, thank you very much, and, and uh, let me say a good morning to the listeners and viewers. Um, I, I, I think what I rather say is that we, we, we seem to see some new style coming mm. up in the appointment style, right? Maybe it was there before, but it never came into the open because we, we do hear some few appointed people saying that, oh, I didn't know. I mean, I was told one in South Africa that somebody was on the, was on the plane and he landed, he landed in Accra and he was told that his name has been um, mentioned. I'm aware of a similar <laughs> situation in Nigeria. The person was airborne and the name was mentioned. And I'm asking, is it a good culture? Uh, basically, it, it, depends, it depends on the issues at stake, right? Um, most of them use the word jostling, you get me? I'll use the word lobbying, no, right? <laughs> no, you use the word jostling, yeah. and I'll use the word lobbying, uh, uh, lobbying. lobbying you get me? Which is, which, which is not a bad thing by itself. I mean, it happens in government. Yeah, but the point is that where, where does the appointer draw the line between doing an independent work and having a whole lot of people rushing onto him mm. looking for positions. He then has to uh, come up with his own style of appointment. Look, let me take everybody by surprise. Let me listen to those who are coming. Let me read all the CVs, but I'll do my, my own thing. The, what is good about that approach is that the appointee himself now becomes aware that, look, I wasn't appointed because I went to lobby it or I sent somebody. In the same vein, I can be removed without being called upon to even answer for whatever I've done. Mm. So in terms of a, of a culture, I must say that it's a step for it, right? And, and let's see how it really, really goes. For me, whatever method is used by the president to appoint is, is, not, too, is, not, is not too important to, to me. What is important is the performance of those who have been appointed. That is going to be the criteria to be used in judging the government of the day, not how they were appointed. Yeah. And, and Abdul Malik, uh, what are your comments on that? And also take into consideration the criticism of 
a bloated government in in make in the making uh, you know of course the president appoints here the focus is on uh, deputy ministerial yes. portfolios mm. uh, 25 of them the last yes, list and the constitution says the president may in an operative word in consultation with the substantive ministers appoint uh, deputy ministers I would assume safely that in most cases the president would consult the substantive ministers because of the principle of compatibility. You know? So I believe that may have happened. Uh, but uh, I would, and it's true, the president would also ask the security services to do a screen, you know, a check on the profile of uh, these potential ministers or deputy ministers. So he would have an idea. Again, here we are talking of a party-based government mm. or governance. So the president, you expect to know the people, to have seen them work in various fields and capacities over a period of time. So even before the security screening, you would expect that the president knows the people he is going is thinking of appointing. So you have all these factors put together that enables a president to decide that Mr. A or Mr. B will fit into this category based on the mission and the program. Look, that what I do you know have, about I, I what goes into the security screening you are referring to? Oh, uh, the, first of all, the legal regime, the constitution has some provisions. You know, how you qualify to be a member of parliament or a minister. You have to do, do that check. It's preliminary. It's fundamental. You know, uh, does the person have any adverse findings coming from a commission of inquiry or committee of inquiry against him? Does the person have any conviction? Or do you clear those things? And then you are sure that he's passed that initial or preliminary constitutional test. Mm. Then there may be other things that uh, may, not, may not have been captured in any legal uh, instrument. But if gets disclosed may create embarrassment mm. for government. You know, if you are a wife bitter and there's a media man loosing around and could easily pick it, I would prefer to leave that kind of person alone, not touch him, so that it brings collateral damage to my government. So the security boys do all sorts of checks beyond what even the constitution or the legal requirements are. And the president will factor that into his appointment. But as I'm saying, he also would have known the people that he wants to pick. All this put together gives the president a certain latitude in making the choice. But I still would want us to cure that mischief of the appointees not having trial notice before the announcement. If to the extent that the president knows them, has done security checks, has looked at their CVs, looked at their work experience, and thinks that this man will fit in here, I still think that before the announcement, there ought to be another level of interaction between the president and the uh, appointees, the nominees. I believe so. It's important, you see, uh, and it's, it's a, that was being sincere, he's being honest, so he's disclosed. And I've heard Akomia, uh, Nana Akomia tell this story as well. So it is clear that it, it is not peculiar to the Mahama administration. It's been a certain yeah. characteristic, mm. you know. For all you know, it may even happen in the earlier republics. I think it is, quote unquote, a certain mischief that we should kill. Bottom line, before the announcement, let's call the gentleman. If the president would cannot, his executive secretary, his uh, secretary, chief of the chief of staff, could have an interaction so with the I, gentleman. Can I give this information? Yes, please. You know, when I was. I was making comments on this. I said that we're in Parliament, mm -hmm. so certainly my phones were off. But when I came out of Parliament and then I moved, I was somewhere around 10, 30, 11, my phone was still off. It was after the announcement that I owned my phone and I realized that Dr. Tubuga had sent me a text message. All right. It doesn't answer the point no, I'm, I'm coming. making. I'm coming. had sent me a text message that he was trying to get in touch. I don't know For what how happened. long was it? Well, it doesn't answer my question. Check, yeah. Because in, they would in, the have case, known. in the case of uh, Barbara Sawa Samwa, yeah. she was called minutes before. Yeah, but that's the point I'm making. It yeah. doesn't. Even if it's a day before, okay. 
it really doesn't answer the point I'm making. Okay. I'm saying that not that this is a serious problem. I'm mm -hmm. not. I do not want to make an absolute out of this omission. Okay. I'm not going to run route on that premise. I am saying that it might appear to be insignificant, but can't we cure this mischief, this insignificant mischief, by giving, having an interaction? Mm -hmm with those potential appointees or ministers, deputy ministers, before the announcement. So that you don't have a situation where ministers and deputy ministers or other government appointees would, out of honesty, tell us that, look here, I didn't know. It, I was sitting somewhere at a beer bar and I had it. I was sitting <laughs> here and I had it. And it's happened. Okay. Not just re re relative to this regime, all right. uh, government, but all previous governments. Because at least I come here here and say, Fantastic witness. Mm. I heard him tell the story, you know, and I find it very fascinating. Okay. We'll return to the matters of uh, size and competence. Nana, what's, what's your preliminary comment about this uh, new uh, list? Youthful. Well, uh, thank you. Let me say, uh, wish my good friends around the table a good morning. Um, Thompson I haven't seen in decades. And... Um, Mutala obviously um, deserves a um, congratulation for his appointment and also your, your viewers and listeners. The, the matter of the non-consultation of ministers is a huge matter. I can put my neck out and tell you that 50% uh, of the reason why we don't get performance from ministers of state is because people are put at the wrong places. Square pegs are put in round holes. And this happens because people are not interviewed. And it's been happening since the beginning of the Fourth Republic, in Jerry Rawlings' time, in J.A. Kufo's time, in John Mills' time. And I thought there would be a change this time, but it seems that the, the, the same old story is what is the same status quo is what is continuing. Something, I mean, Joy FM or multimedia, I don't think you would appoint somebody middle level manager without speaking to the person to know the person's aptitude as far as the job that you want to give to the person is concerned. Now, why would you appoint somebody to the high position of minister of state, deputy minister of state, who are going to lead whole nationwide sectors, agriculture, tourism, energy, and you won't find 15 minutes to sit down with the person to find out where the person's own aptitude is. So if you, if you call all the, the pool of people that you have in mind, and you say, Mutala, we've won elections, You've played a good part in our campaign. Uh, what, what, what work would you like to do in the administration? Let Mutala tell you that, President, I would like to work in agriculture. And let him tell you what he identifies to be the problems or the issues in agriculture mm. and how he hopes to take the sector forward. So if you deal with 30, w 40 Wouldn't people, they be doing that before Parliament? No, the president is the one who's appointed. Mm. Find time, just one day, speak to everybody. The 15 parliament minutes. has a role to vet and approve. The way it works is that the president makes the appointment. Parliament unless, vets for competence. You know, unless, no, no, parliament doesn't vet you for competence. Oh, I see. No, it, it, it's, not, it's not a competent test. When you ask about na uh, reciting the national uh, anthem and all of that, well, you know. The president will get the appointees he wants, unless there's some major uh, 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 technical defect. But otherwise, uh, they won't say to you that, why are you going to agree when you have a background in, a, in, a, in a, 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 a drama? They won't, they won't ask you that. So I'm saying that if you spoke to 30, 40 of your people, you would have before you an idea of how Muntala thinks what he, his attitude and where he would best be fitted. So right from the get-go, if you, you appoint Mutala, he would hit the ground running. And we are going to have a better input from him mm. than this current situation that you have. The Minister of Agriculture said he wasn't consulted. He heard about it in Parliament. 
and he's going to manage a sector like agriculture. Let's begin so, with you on the question of size and competence of those who have been appointed so far. Well, I mean, as for the competence, I would assume that people haven't started work. So I assume that you'll put in their best. Until, let's wait a while, six months, one year, and then we can talk about competence. But size, I am horribly disappointed. Uh, the size of ministers has always been an issue. The mm. size of government has always been an issue. President Kufuor actually had occasion to apologize and say that I thought that the size was an issue, but when I came into, into the presidency, I realized that um, sometimes it's not always the case and you have to look at the, the, the kind of vision that you want to achieve. But you see, and Kufuor had 82 ministers. And the NDC criticized him from day one for that size of ministry. And Kufo had to apologize. So now, if the NDC is in power and they have 85 ministers, it's a huge disappointment. Especially when at this particular period we are being asked by the government to sacrifice and to tighten our belts because the, the meat is down to the bowl. Now, if you're asking everybody to tighten their belt, you, the government, the president, should show the example by having a lean government for the symbolic value, the perception value to the people that the president means business when he says that we are on a shoestring budget and we must tighten our belts. You have six pres uh, ministers at the presidency. The reason why all kinds of uh, 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 activities were put under the presidency it's because there was a thinking that you needed the weight of the presidency in those sectors or in those activities, like AIDS commission and so on. It's, it's such a big issue in those times that it was thought that you needed the weight of the presidency. So those things are put in the office of the president. So the president can bring the weight of the office to bear on those issues. Now, if you find out that the president will not have time to deal with those activities that have been put under his office, I would think that the, the, the more reasonable thing to do is to let those activities go back to the ministries from which they were taken to and put at the presidency. Not to appoint new ministers to handle those activities. Because you're already under ministries and they were brought to your office so you can put your weight behind it. If you can't put your weight behind it because of time, why appoint new ministers? Take, take those activities back to the ministries. Now you have a minister of the president say, I'm, I'm in charge of banking. Then another one says, I'm in charge of scholarships. Then what else are they in charge of? Each of the six have been given some funny, funny assignments. Uh, <laughs> please help me. I remember somebody said it's banking, somebody said it's scholarship. You there are other things. So let me, let me. It's important. But let me conclude. Let me so end on this point. And I'll for at least, for the, even the, in terms of motivating the country, the numbers are big. I heard one of the, the senior colleagues in parliament uh, saying that, oh, we're appointing many of them so that when the uh, ministers come to parliament and they are turning to parliament, the deputies can take over. But many of the deputies themselves are members of parliament. So, you know, so it is an issue. And, and I'm disappointed that how many years, 20 years or so, 25 years or so into the Fourth Republic, we are not able to send a message to our people that we are tightening our belts, we are aware of the, of the financial constraints, the poverty levels in this country, and we are tightening our belts. You, you seem to be all kinds of largesse when it comes to the, the governance. The cost of governance, the president himself has said mm. that 60% of our internal revenue goes to public sector salaries. The workers in the public sector are just about 4%. They're consuming 60% of our internal revenue. And then you... You, sh you don't show any example by padding it up at the top. All right. Now, uh, Mutala, you take it from this point, from that point of uh, the expenditure, government expenditure, especially in paying, you know, people uh, who are ministers, MPs, and all of that. That takes a huge chunk of the public purse. So how do you justify uh, the numbers? And also you have minis ministries that are getting two, two, two deputies. Well, something. Uh, first and foremost, I think that it's important for, for us to get something very clear. The issue of ministers of state mm. uh, didn't start today. They were there, but they were there for a purpose. And I still think that the purpose for which ministers of state were appointed, I think that it was important, it was necessary. 
I think is still important and necessary because you have about 45 agencies under the presidency. 45 agencies. Now, if you look at the reference Nanao Kumia made to, was the fact that some of them appeared before the, the parliamentary select committees on various sectors, particularly uh, the, the Committee on Finance. Mm. And then they appeared with agencies that are within their, their control. What His Excellency the President did was that, yes, if you have these 45, uh, 47 agencies under the presidency, and some of the agencies have challenges, you know, so what do we then do? For us, as part of the good governance, as part of improving the living conditions of people, there, there is the need for some supervisory role to be played by ministers of state responsible for those agencies. So when they were appearing before the committees, they appeared, they, they came with them just to explain the budget because, mind you, you appear, you'd have to tell people that your expenditure uh, returns, how much you spend, and then explain why it is justified for some amount of money to be given to you in the, in the new, uh, what do they call it, the incoming financial year. And I think that that was the explanation. Mm. The difference is that the ministers of state under the previous governments that we have probably didn't have the opportunity to tell the people of this country that, okay, I'm a minister of charge, a minister of state at the presidency. I'm responsible for A, B, C, D. They never told us the that. The argument has also been made that the things they are responsible for already being catered for by other individuals in various ministries. If you take the Ghana East Commission, for instance, they don't fall under any ministry. Mm. When they have a challenge, then they would seek refuge in one ministry, Ministry of Health. But when it comes to how they spend their money, they don't fall under any ministry. And I don't think that that is proper because you must, there must be some, some checks as to what you do. So many of the agencies, you look at them and you say that this agency should fall under this, but there isn't any law. And that, that ministry cannot force them. Well, what you mentioned is an exception. How about, say, the uh, man in charge of PPP, where you have a desk and someone in charge of PPP? You are talking about also uh, Fifi Kwete responsible for uh, financial institutions and all of that. And we understand that traditionally that's been the job of the deputy finance minister. Yeah, what the, the Ghana East Commission is just one of many examples. And, and I wouldn't be in the position to give several examples but i can tell you that many of them appeared and in the committee which is made up of both majority and minority we all agreed that look some of the agencies have absolute if you like mm. a, a, a autonomy the extent to which not even ministries can supervise what they do and i can quite remember dr akuto made a very strong point when one one agency appeared that look when you talk of your budget how you spend your money you don't fall under any ministry and you take your decisions alone but when we have problems, then you quickly tell us that you think that this ministry should have done this. And that is why I just look, look so at it. So why don't you just put them under the ministry? Uh, in, that, in that case, that would have been, first and foremost, a duplication. Now, some of these agencies, funding of such agencies, are not even coming from the state. If you take the Ghana East Commission, to a very large extent, the funding that the Ghana agency has is donor funded. Now, I agree that we all need to look at it if there is a need for us to move them so that we don't have this issue of, of ministers of state at the presidency and then we do that. That is a collective responsibility. And it's interesting to state that, Nana, that some suggestions like you are making came up during the committee's level that if we can take a real look at, at some of such agencies so that we come out with a law saying that this, this and this should fall under this, this minister. But as it stands now, they don't. So must we say until we do that, we will not have ministers had in, the, in the presidency who will be responsible. I remember Dr. Akutu was a minister of state at the, in, in charge of finance. Yes. You know, and, and, and yeah, he you're played, talking about Dr. Antonio Akutu. Akutu say, and he played a very critical role. So I'm just saying that. He wasn't, he wasn't at the presidency. He was minister of state. In the ministry, in the ministry. of finance. So you, so, so you would have a minister of finance, you have a deputy minister of finance, and you have a minister of state. In is the same ministry. So the difference is just mm. that because this one is, is at the presidency. Because if you are talking about cost, if you have a minister of state at the, in, the, in the minister of finance, you have a minister of finance, a deputy minister of finance, then you have that. It's, this, it's still the same thing. It's because not. our argument has to do with the cost. No, it is not. No, our challenge has to do with the expenditure. Whether he's at the presidency or at the ministry, the fact is that he's still going to be catered for. And, and our concern now is the cost in catering for such, if you like, duplication. That you have a minister of finance, you have a deputy minister of finance, you have a minister of state. Now... What can he do that the deputy minister and the minister can't do? 
What can he do that the chief director or the directors at the ministry cannot do? What I'm simply saying is that, yes, it's a concern that we all need to look at. But as things stand now, if you have about 47 agencies, mm. and the way some of the agencies operate, you certainly would want to have a supervisory role where they report directly to His Excellency the President. And I think that is something that I wouldn't say is bad. Mm. Maybe probably we need to streamline it. So, but, sorry, but tell me this. Um, you and Felix will be at the Information Ministry. You'll be supporting Mahama Yaga. Do you have different roles to play? I think that we've always had two ministers of, deputy ministers at the Ministry of Information. And that is uh, with the inception of the NP N NDC administration, NDC 2. Yes, you would have two deputies. It depends. And, you know, uh, something this time around, we don't have a spokesperson, if you like, at, at presidential spokesperson. If you, don't, you don't see that. So the responsibility is huge. I don't know what, what the vision mm. of His Excellency the President in, in, is, was into appointing two people to come. But I believe that the two deputy ministers at the Ministry of Information and the Prof. Mills did excellently well. Mm. And I believe that that is why His Excellency the President would want to have another two people. If you take the Minister of Agri, you have about <coughs> two deputies. But a point was made, and I would want to quickly just, just respond okay. to that, as to the consultation. Almost everybody who is appointed, I think that there are people who have some, some expertise in the background. Take the Minister of Agri. The Minister of Agri, his background is he's an agriculturist. You take the deputy minister who is appointed, if you look at his background. Anabisu. If you take Hanabisu, Hanabisu is a veterinary doctor. And I think that it falls under the same. Now, if you come and take Minister, minister of Trade, you know, you have Honorable Harun Edrisu. Mind you, these are places that you would need someone with a legal background. As a matter of fact, and having worked with the Minister of Communication, he has some, some, some understanding of some of the international transactions and others that are entered into. You take Minister of Health. Clearly, if you look at Honorable Sherry Ayite, she has some background in, in the sciences. And also, it's the ability to negotiate. Mm -hmm. Because you are talking of some of this, Tony. You take Minister of Education. I mean, this is a former Vice Chancellor who has some appreciation on, on, on education. So I believe there's, there's that. There's no argument about so that. So if you take, that is what I'm saying, mm -hmm. that almost all those who are appointed, to a very large extent, I can't say all, to a very large extent, have some understanding in the ministries that they are appointed to man. I see. Um, um, Maybe ask of me. Mr. Mr. Thompson, <laughs> Mr. Thompson the, the argument again is that if the president is making these appointments, he should make them, you know, and have it at the back of his mind that, look, he's been telling the people of Ghana that we have a problem. We don't have sufficient, you know, funds to take care of ourselves now. We have uh, too many problems to deal with at this point. And so we, it appears that we ought to be cutting, you know, our cloth according to our size. Uh, what do you say? You, you, let, me, let, let, let me just they, they, there's, a, they, there's someone who, who tries to put together how much the, the expenditure goes. And he says, for example, that a total of about 500,000 uh, Ghana CDs um, is spent on each minister a year, between 500,000 and 1 million on a minister a year. The ministers are taking up to about uh, 10,000. The deputies are taking about 9,000. Uh, they have all the perks that come with it. There would be the need for some V8 vehicle. There will be the need for some uh, other additional vehicle or, or so. There will be bungalows that will be furnished and cooks and security and all of that. That comes at a huge cost to the state and the taxpayer. Why does it appear that the president is not taking you know, cognizance of that? And let me tell you something. I mean... Democracy is expensive. Let's get something straight. And, and I think that in this country, at times, there's too much overemphasis on costs without looking at efficiency. What is it that they are bringing to the table? I've heard so many people spoken about. Oh, the number is too high. It happened during President Kufo's time. He came up and said, look, either to I thought a reduced number would achieve efficiency. I got there and I realized that it's not as simple as as that. Right. It happened in the case of the U.S. Pre-Obama and after Obama. Right. But the point I'm trying to make is that not a single person in this country has pointed out that this is the, m the maximum number of people we need as ministers in order to achieve the desired efficiency we want. 
the same people. We have had Park with Indum. We have had uh, 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 Edward None Mahama. of them is based Edward on. Mahama. Let me suggest, tell you, none of them is based. Do with 50 let me tell you, none of them is based on any as, scientific. As, as small as 40. None of them is based on any scientific evaluation mm. of the demand side of the equation, the work to be done. None of them is based on that. Some I will classify as just political talk. Because if you ask any of them to give you what research work they did, what evaluation they did, before they arrive at 40 and 50, there's none. They'll tell yes. you that you can let have me, a minister let, and, and then the chief uh, directors at the, at the various let, places can uh, let, do the let, rest let, of the job. Let me job. tell you something. Let me tell you something. You, talk, you talk, spoke of Minister of Finance. I've worked with Minister of Finance on so many issues. Right. And if you've been in it, you realize that that ministry, the volume of work there, the details of the work there, you get me? You might even prepare to break that ministry down. I don't want to go into details. Whether on the MPP or on the NDC, you get me? As somebody who's risen to, I mean, to a level of a general council of states, when we, we deal with this, I've worked with the ministry. And I've worked with so many ministries. The workload at times is not easy. Now, when we talk of cost, um, the recurrent expenditure of government, the salaries and the rest, I mean, who is saying that is because of the ministers? It's not because of the ministers. Ever since, ever, even from the time Dennis Austin wrote his book in politics of Ghana, the public sector has always <coughs> been a problem. What we have not done is what other countries have done years back. How do you divert that labor in the public service into another productive area? No government has been very bold to do it because it involves putting in more money, training people there, having growth in other sectors of the economy and then moving the people. That has not been done. Right. But we, we always pinpoint the place which is very easy to criticize ministers. 82, 85. What really are we really talking about? Secondly, uh, or further on, the, the, the number of ministers might depend on the agenda of the government of the day. Then when you go to the issue of some ministers being put in the presidency, it's not new. But why are we not talking of reducing the bureaucracy involved in the ministerial work? And therefore, it will, it will, it will, be, it will be necessary now to move certain functions to direct supervision under the ministry, under the presidency, to, to speed up work. The same Ghanaians will complain about there's so much delay in this and the rest. When the structure is changed to take the work out of the bureaucracy of our public service, which we all know about, and then have a more specialized approach. Because look, if you're going to build an airport project, it's not a joke. I can't see an airport project being handled through a ministry. The bureaucracy in the ministry itself will frustrate the investors. It's not a joke. Right. So I think that in answering this question, we should look at the broader picture. Mm. I mean, is it not for a very good reason that when we come to, to pa the, the parliament, there is a procedure by which we increase the number of parliaments, looking at constituencies and the rest. But interestingly, when you look at the two other arms of government, which is the executive and most probably the judiciary, right, no limitations were put in the, in the, in the constitution. There's a very good reason for that. Because how do you determine that 82 is enough to achieve the efficiency you want, that's it, that's it. the effectiveness you want? It's not easy. Don't you, right. subscribe, don't you subscribe to the proposition that we should have a constitutional ceiling to this? No, I don't think so. Because to do that would be to clamp the hands of, of the presidency. Why? But each, pres each president comes with his agenda. Now, if you talk of a lean government, can you tell me that 85 is not a lean government, 82 is not a lean government? What is, what is the def definition of a lean government? We all, suppose, we all support a lean government. But who has said that 82 on the Akufo or 85 is not a lean government? You can't also look at figures per se, like you, like you said. Oh, one million a year and then it's bloated. No. What percentage of that is, is of course, is, is our GDP? Sometimes the comparison is with best practice. So you're, looking, you're looking at how, how many Ghanaians do you have? A country also that is bedeviled with um, poverty. And you're pointing as many as 85. And you yeah, go, yeah, yeah. Let, you, let, me, let, you, let me tell you something. You I, go I to mean, best maybe, examples. Maybe, maybe that is the very reason. I mean, the, the, the myriad of problems we have might be the very reason 
why you need to change the structure first to have some people now reporting directly to the president to speed up things. And that might be even the reason why you might need more ministers to achieve the thing. You see, at, at times when we're making these uh, ag arguments, you get me? Shouldn't, we, they, we need shouldn't, to be, be, shouldn't they be the focus be quality rather than quantity? That, no, I mean, you are, you are using the same words in a different form. I'm saying that, you get me? You are talking of quantity numbers. You are talking of quality. What is quality? Quality, quality leads to what? Efficiency and effectiveness, right? We, we've not, if, if the issue is about competence of a minister, I think that one we have to interrogate it. Let me get yes, to but, 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 but let me now. just make mm. one, one more point. You see, mm. I have seen people run into other countries and say, oh, this country has this number of people. And it has this and they are, number and of people. And they are wealthier countries. Yes, That's but, where but, the comparison but, comes but, from. In but, the but, UK, but, but the US, something. wealthier for, countries. For someone like me, mm. you get me, who have done an attachment to Whitehall before, their system of working, their, their ministry system is not is different from ours, so they can afford to have a lower number of ministers. The efficiency there, <laughs> right? You remember? No, we also you, you, deserve you, such an efficient ministry. Yeah, yeah, but you haven't got there yet. Mm. So be careful. You don't rather go and create more problems. Question is when for, will we get for, there? For, yeah, you <laughs> it, unfortunately, development is not linear, so mm. we don't need to go one step by by one step, one step after the the other. But I do think that we'll get there. Okay. But, but let's be careful about over-criticizing ourselves. You think that is what things. is going on let's now? Let's aim at uh, efficiency. News file is brought to you by the candidate sponsorship of Star Assurance and MTN everywhere you go. Uh, I'll, I'll hear from Abdul Malik. Uh, Abdul Malik, the question is that, for example, uh, Mr. Thompson thinks that uh, for Dr. Paco Zindum and people like uh, Edward Mahama to suggest that you could have a, a, a minister, you know, put uh, off about... 40 to 50 is, is, is wishful thinking. It can't happen in Ghana. Well, no, no, I, no, I didn't say so. I said that. No, <laughs> no, please, please. There's no, 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 it's I, not scientifically I, 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 I'm determined. I'm not seeing any, any mm. scientific determination mm. of, of that. If we want to do that now, mm. let's rather start the process to do that to guide future government. But there's none. Okay. That's what I'm so people are asking, for example, the ministries where you have two deputies and even including ministries where we are told the, the two wise men have been appointed to assist with certain projects. So in, you, you may be talking about four uh, individuals manning a, minist a ministry. Well, there was a time we had 10 mm. deputy ministers of agriculture, mm. one for each region, you recall. Yeah. And so Rollins, uh, in 1997, in his State of Nation address, abolished uh, that particular thing as part of the effort to reduce the size of government. Uh, as Nana Komiya said, it's, it's a long-standing debate, mm. uh, and it's become a debate of uh, numbers. And I find it very difficult to arrive at any conclusion, I'll be honest with you, uh, in the sense that it, it changes. When President Kufu made a public confession about the fact that he didn't know how the system was and all that, and so he was challenged by critics that that was just an excuse to provide him with a pretext to increase the numbers. Yes, the numbers did increase eventually. And uh, so we've been, and during that time, I, my paper did a certain research, you know, to find out what the trend has been from independence to today. Of course, population size has changed. Even regions, at independence we had five regions. Mm -hmm. By 1966, we had eight regions. So again, if you are talking of regional ministers, based on the fact that you've increased regions, you definitely have an increased number of regional ministers. You know, So things have changed. We've moved from the Nkrumah era. By 66, you had 43 ministers and deputy ministers. You know? So look at that time. We have a six point something million. And today, we are about 25 or so million. Am I right? Yes, we are. Yes. Close to. And we are hitting 85 ministers. If you look at the statistics and the figures, mm. it's difficult to come to any conclusion. It's, 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 it's beautiful. It's nice to hear that people can run the Ghanaian system with 40 ministers. But I'm with Ernest on the score that I have, I'm yet to see any scientific analysis of that. I'm yet to see it. Do you really need that? Oh, yes, we do. 
you need you need to tell us how you the ministries how you going to combine them perhaps it will call for realignment of ministries it will call for taking some ministries off and putting some uh, uh, that's jobs they do under one ministry so put down a paper and there's a natural expectation that we'll get to that point we'll yeah but we should it. we should we have i think we have people with their brains to start doing things like that. We have governance experts and specialists and things who can do that so that we can interrogate and debate it publicly and see how far. And then, of course, it's up to a president to adapt it. I'm not too sure we can uh, consolidate that into an iron casting in a constitution. I'm not too sure about that. Okay? It's just like I'm against those who say we should have a ceiling on the number of Supreme Court judges, or all the judges there should or go and sit. Or members of parliament. <laughs> oh, no, parliament, mm -hmm. yeah, I am for. Parliament, yeah, I am for a ceiling. I'll be honest with you. Parliament, yeah, instinctively, I don't know I'm for a ceiling. But in terms of the Supreme Court, I'm not for a ceiling. You know? So this is an area that from the fourth, let's say, let's start from the fourth republic. No government has succeeded in beating the numbers down. Yet we've continued with the debate. So I am expecting those who are insisting that the numbers are large to give us a certain scientific formula to arrive at that. We're talking of ministers, uh, deputy ministers being two or three. Let me give you an example. This is uh, the appointment list of 17 February 2005. I suppose that's the first, second term mm. of President Kufo. That is so. If you go in, in the deputy ministers, at the attorney general's department, uh, the ministry, we had two. At ministry of health, we had two. At ministry of finance and economic planning, we had three. At ministry of education and sports, we had three. At ministry of lands, forestry and mines, we had three. At ministry of local government and rural development, we had two. At Ministry of Works and Housing, we had two. At Ministry of Manpower, Youth and Employment, we had two. And then at Ministry of Trade and Industry, we had three. In the end, we had a total of? In the end, we had a total of 53. Okay? We had, and then sometimes we forget the presidential staffers and aides who come with ministerial and deputy ministerial rankings. So that in terms of the cost, if you are talking of the emoluments, and allowances and uh, French benefits. They are virtually like ministers and deputy ministers. Mm. So if you are looking at the social and economic cost, then that is the size. It's huge by all standards. It's how we re-engineer. I'm not against re-engineering in order to get a reduction, but I am not competent to give you a formula. The truth is the, of the matter is that I have not been able to look at it to give a formula. Okay, are we, what, how we, let's try in our own way. How are we going to do it? The ministries that we've seen here. Okay, which ones are we going to collapse into the other so that we have a single ministry instead of two or three? It's a very difficult I think the expectation thing. is that you don't need two deputies. Yes. And that will help cut down. You, that's, that's a way out. Ministry of, uh, you see, when, when you combine the ministries, Ministry of lands, forestry, and mines. They had three. If you look at it, it's such a big ministry. One minister and a deputy may not be effective mm. in terms of efficiency. So sometimes it's not so much the numbers, but what the numbers can bring about. So okay? do, you, do you find you look it justifiable? At the size, do you find it justifiable that presently you have two for the gender ministry, you have two for the education ministry. Do you find it First justified? of all, we have the vision. What is, what is the program for that ministry? You know it's one ministry, I mean, you're still unable to determine what its vision is. That's the gender ministry. Yes. Okay, it's just, they've, added, <laughs> they've added social protection. I'm being yeah, honest with you. That's all. I have not had a clear-cut explanation or understanding of what that ministry is supposed to do. Okay? I haven't. So I have a problem. I mean, that. Gender is social yeah, that is what is it? What is it? What is it supposed to do? The area of social protection itself. If really we're doing it well, I've been regarding. Yeah, what, what is social protection? Which I areas mean, are they to cover? 
what was the target groups? Mm -hmm. What what mm -hmm. are yeah, the yeah, yes. Challenge, yeah, so right, the vulnerable. Why you mentioned even, them? Even the children. Vulnerable. Em, most of us are social vulnerable. Social welfare. Mm. <laughs> most yeah. of us are vulnerable. <laughs> 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 no, no, no. What are talking about? You are talking about people with disability. Vulnerability. <laughs> 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 yeah, so yeah, define it. But you see, what I'm doing is to ask for a definition. Exactitude. Vulnerable. Who are the vulnerable people in the society? As for disabilities, clear. I can easily identify and recognize who they are. But I'm not able to put an exactitude on vulnerability. The vulnerable. Who are they? include the, the 2,000 plus or so that will be feeding or 20. The that leap, will be feeding so the leap, does the leap go under at the that ministry? The land park. No, yeah. I'm asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does it go under that ministry? Yeah. Yeah. Has it been taken? So it's no longer under employment. You see, if it takes you see, we need to know that. Kweku, you you know, LIP. Yes. Kweku, if you have about 20% or more of your population to be physically challenged, 20 or more, you know, it's, it's well, a I huge percentage. Is, 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 yeah. is that what yeah. it is? Yeah. No, we are told, yeah. We are told about 20 or more. That's, 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 the disability, whatever the groups is that so? Oh, they find okay, we'll, we'll clearly, check up on this even one. Even at the end, was making his point. Let that. him finish and then we'll move on. Yeah, so to be honest with you, we need to define, we need to get a vision. Look, there was a time we used to have a minister resident in Guinea, you know that because of the Ghana Guinea Mali Union. We used to have that because that was the vision. Our point that we had integrated our national politics with the continental. So Yes, please. You remember we had a minister for the beautification of the city. Yes, modernization. Modernization of the city. Yes. That depends on the vision the of the vision. government for that day. Mm. So how you cannot, that's why I'm saying that I find it difficult to get that enforced in the terms of a constitutional regime, you know, putting it in the constitution. I find it difficult. It comes back to the vision. And perhaps if we can get our governance experts to put up, do the pro appropriate research, see how which ministries perhaps are even irrelevant or unnecessary mm -hmm. and which can be boxed together a president can adopt that i see and proceed with it and achieve results you see once there's a force of example of a success and a success of a, an example it has this compelling effect for people to take otherwise this debate threatens to be an endless one over numbers. I see. Yeah. But, but the question about numbers, and uh, Mr. Thompson mentions, you know, Minister for Beautification, and it depends on the vision of the president. But can't we, as a country, come together and be able to say that this is irrelevant? We don't need that. For example, there's the argument that there's nothing to show for the, the beautification ministry thing. But, but, but let me help, help you out. I, I, I think that maybe there's rather more work to be done because I remember very well. Um, during the time, other prior to the structural adjustment, or when we we're just doing the structural adjustment, the World Bank had various committees formed. I served on one on the HR side, and we were camp in Gimpa. And we did some work trying to find out the realignment of the ministries, what should be the optimal number of ministers, and it wasn't easy, right? So I think that mm -hmm. there are some materials somewhere, because a lot of publications were done from the structural adjustment period trial. But mm. I, like we were saying, we need to do more scientific work and have a scientific basis. Mm. Then we can end this argument once again. All before. right, thank you very much. And the 20% of the population being disabled that, uh, or physically challenged that uh, uh, Mutala mentioned, uh, the report is supposed to be coming from the West Africa Country's 2011 census report. Thank you very much. Uh, mm. Uh, you know, we should find the causes. Yeah. Huh? yeah. It's, it's not the best. Okay. Nana, in terms Nana, of uh, productivity and all those things. Yeah. Nana, I'll give you one minute and then we'll move on. You know, I was surprised when my brother Mutala said he didn't know the president's vision. <laughs> I thought, that, you know, once you're a minister, you should know the president's vision. Uh, Did he say uh, that? Yeah, you, no, you mentioned it. But let me, 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 no, no, you said it here. I said, I haven't been, can I, can I go on? You see, let me, let me finish. No, I agree, but I'm saying that I haven't been vetted, I haven't even started, I can be rejected by parliament, how would I know? what my work is supposed to entail at the Ministry of Information. But don't be mischievous. Thank you. No, no, no. <laughs> if you don't know the president's vision at this time, <laughs> it's a very serious matter. No, why but anyway. to continue no. with what no, did with the two deputy the, ministers? That's the, the point. You see,
something. Mm -hmm. Thompson talked about cost is not important. No, I didn't say so. I said okay. you have to weigh the cost against efficiency. It cannot only be cost alone. Okay. Uh, please, please. Thank so you. let's so, be careful. So, so please, <laughs> don't don't fall. Cost, <laughs> cost is important. I think it is we, very we, important. We don't have infinite resources. Mm. The level of deprivation in this country, cost is absolutely important. More especially when you want to send a message to your people that we should tighten our belts, that we should cut. Uh, 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 cut off the is, is down to the bone, but like, but like, Mr. Thompson, if, if you talk about efficiency, it is, like, we, we are so poor and we have too many problems that you may need an army of ministers My down brother, there to be able to bring about the change Samson, and the development. Something if the system is not working, you can put 200 ministers, institutional reform that is what you need to get the system working, not merely piling up ministers. I mean, look. Mills, President Mills, or the last count, they had 88 ministers. What do we have today? Um, I haven't had water in my house for three days. What's that? Oh. What's that? No, 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 I'm driving a point. What has that got to do with oh, no, 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 I'm driving. <laughs> let, me, let me finish my point. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Excluded, you see, excluded special assistance. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm saying to you, Zibu Talab, we're talking about officials. Yeah. I'm saying to you that <laughs> at the end of last year, we had over 80 ministers. As we sit, I haven't had water for three days in my house. Okay. You want gas? People travel let's, from Accra to Kaswa let's, for let's, gas. Let's, let's, let's so what end are you talking on that about note? Efficiency? Let's end on no, that note. And, um, let me read to you what some of the people <laughs> who are listening and watching are thinking. Um, this one from Russ, uh, Culture Univers University of Atlanta Hall, uh, Cape Coast. All right. Uh, he says that sometimes people. People don't want to hear the truth because they don't want their illusions destroyed. I pray the Supreme Court to be snappy in their dealings. Okay, I'll make sure that uh, the text will be tailored to the particular issue that we have to discuss. This one from Sela Samuel Amo in Kenya. So he says, 85 ministers and deputy ministers for a small nation like Ghana is just too much at the time the nation is facing financial uh, challenges due to government overspending. We cannot just afford the cost of accommodation, cars, and fuel, uh, just to mention a few. I am beginning to side with those who are saying that the president is just rewarding his men with these positions. God save Ghana. Isaac from Borga writes, The appointment of the deputy ministers is no news to some of us. This only goes to confirm the fact that in the NDC, positions are not uh, given on merit, but rather people who can defend the bad administration, as well as those who lie on issues and deal in propaganda very well. Uh, Ebo Hayford says, I want to find out whether an MP who is a minister would take the 7,200 as MP and 10,000 as a minister together, making his salary 17,200. Okay. I understand it is optional. I understand no, no, it is optional. You don't choose. Once you're a minister, you, you are take it. Office of the president. I see. You're Interesting. Okay. Baba Adam in Cape Coast writes, even though I admire the youthful nature of the appointments, I however think the number of ministers, especially the deputies, are many and can be described as job for the boys. We need to build our institutions by allowing the technocrats in the various ministries to take full responsibility. Samuel Bryan, Boabing, I will she write something. How can we have just one deputy minister for health ministry, which takes care of all Ghanaians, and rather put two deputy ministers for the gender ministry, which, uh, what is JM's interest there? And final text message um, from Ernest in Taifa. Is that something? The president categorically said we have chewed the meat and now left with bones. So why don't we manage the little resources to benefit and shape the living conditions of the ordinary person. Thank you very much. We take a quick break here. We'll return and look at uh, overspending of the leaking kitty. You're welcome back. This is your Joy News channel on Multi TV, and this is a news file. You're also listening to us on. Uh, Joy 99.7 FM and on Love FM in Kumasi and over a dozen affiliate stations across the country. You're also watching and listening uh, at myjoyonline.com 
and multi TV world slash streams. I'm Samson Ladia Yenini, my guest Abdul Maliko Kubako Jr., uh, Mutala Mohammed, uh, Nana Komia, and Ennis Thompson. Now, I'll uh, finish with these uh, text messages and then we'll move on to uh, Jeddah and the uh, uh, sports ministry. We'll do that briefly and then move on to the questions of uh, Guinea Fowl and afforestation. Um, this one from uh, Someone I know in this country who is, does not belong to any of the political parties, as far as I know, but doesn't want to be identified, says, let's not condone the irresponsible and profligate direction in which this Mahama administration and its policy advices um, are heading. We have to cut our cost, uh, our quote, according to our size. It is not for nothing that the Constitution talks about 19 uh, cabinet ministers. If the framers thought we needed just 19 ministers in cabinet for this country to be running properly, what are we busy uh, doing? Having close to 30 ministries and appointing about 90 ministers and deputies. This is the height of irresponsibility. We definitely don't need two uh, deputy ministers uh, of information, period. Thank you very much. Uh, I hold my privilege um, not to disclose who it is. Um, he's not. <laughs> but, but I can tell you that for a fact. He's not. I, I'm telling you. I'm telling you for a fact. Well, he's making the point that there should be a point of departure. There should be a point of departure. A.U. Farouk uh, <laughs> Sangani Tamale writes that we thank the president for nominating the youth to serve in his government. This shows that the president has a youth at heart. NDC, Idebi, Keke. Edward Castro Sanaya writes, I believe the argument about the size of this government is born out of what the president said himself, that all the meat is gone, leaving the bones. If indeed this assertion is anything to go by, one would assume this government will form the, will form the leanest government ever. We have all kinds of public workers not satisfied with their conditions of service and are always told there is no money for them. Mohammed Abbas writes something. Is Nana Kumia saying the number of ministers will affect John Mohammed's government? Nana should spare us and let deal with the competency and expertise of these ministers. I spare their mandate and future challenges. A very final one from Boachi Adam. He says that I would like to inform the president that we need the following ministers. Minister for Light Off, Minister for Zoom Lion, Minister for Decongestion, and Minister for Pilgrimage. Thanks. On that light note, uh, let's now move on to the what I call the overspending of the leaking, you know, uh, kitty. And as you are aware, the, minis the Minister for Sports has um, indicated or even given an order for a freeze on allowances or money to the uh, GEDA, the formerly National Youth and Employment Program. And why is that so? Because there is allegation of corruption at that uh, outfit. You would have followed a Joy News documentary comprehensively detailing what appears to be broad daylight robbery and corruption at that uh, uh, outfit. But we are told even though the minister then commissioned an investigation, which investigation uh, confirmed the alleged corruption going on, or rots, and also the national uh, security also did investigate and confirmed the same instances. Meanwhile, the people who are involved in all the rot are still walking the streets of this country, spending the monies that they are led to have siphoned into private accounts with the co collusion of setting uh, managers of some banks. Uh, I want us to take that issue together with the youth uh, sports ministry's overspending of its budget by about 200 million Ghana cities, is it? And the explanation by the minister to that was that part of that money, the overspending was due to uh, because they use part of the monies from the from that ministry to pay the employees of JEDA. Um, start with you, Nanakumia. You have been in, at this um, uh, the ministry and you have been in charge of this particular um, outfit before. How do we resolve the current problems? Does it stop by simply freezing further funding 
to that uh, outfit? <clears throat> well, thank you, Samson. The, when you have a, a budget of about 54 million Ghana cities for the whole ministry, and NYEP, which is an activity under that ministry, alone, you overspend by 200 million. That's a problem. The entire budget approved by parliament for the entire ministry is 54 million Ghana cities. There are always contingencies because you may have cost overruns and so on, inflation and all of that. And the fact is that parliament approves far less what they requested. Yes, but that's what parliament has approved, looking at the, at the envelope, the, the, the cash envelope that the nation has. They are competing interests. So you cannot be given all that you want. So you manage the resources as has been budgeted for. Otherwise, what is the point in going to parliament? So if you've been given 54 million, so contingency, cost overruns and so on, inflation, so maybe 10 percent, 20 percent. It could be understandable. But when you have almost 300 percent overspent, there's an issue. Going against the budget that has been approved, set by parliament and passed into law through the Appropriation Act. And also, the extent, the magnitude of the overspending. It, it cannot be explained. We are being told, what I have heard, is that, oh, uh, we took on more workers under the Youth Employment Program. Several modules were created in the period. You know, so Parliament, in its wisdom, had approved a budget for you. You operate under the budget. That's why today we are saddled with a deficit of 12.1% of our GDP. It's a contributory factor. How do you explain it? Say, oh, we have to employ more people. So, you know, we, we, we did that and we, we, we spent the money. It's an issue that is so difficult to understand. And it is not just this ministry. Cuts across. You go to several ministries, huge overspending against what parliament has approved. So what is happening? And then you look at the other side, key basic services that should be provided for are not being provided for. Health insurance, monies that should be transferred in three months to deal with the health conditions of our people are not transferred. Even the disability, the 2% disability that should go to, uh, in, from the common fund, are not being transferred. Small monies are not being transferred until people go on strike. And then you have all of these monies being overspent because people say they, they, they took on more people. That's one of the reasons why there's a plethora of strike actions today. The minister says overspending is not the same as, as it were, you know, chopping the money. So what is overspending? As if you have stolen it. Yeah, so what, what is the overspending? You've spent it for a good cause. <laughs> but <coughs> what do you expect the minister to say? It is up to parliament and the audit people to go in there and ensure that every personal of that overspending is accounted for. We cannot take the minister's word. Isn't the Joy FM that did uh, some investigation into NYP and uncovered massive fraud and corruption? It's Joy FM. There are huge numbers of ghost names. Officials would, ah, Muktala was the working there. Yeah, you should have. <laughs> I've forgotten. Just in charge of but, communications. I'll come to him. Yeah, but he was a big man at the NYP. Like you. you know, <laughs> the, the massive uh, uh, um, Corruption, Finish uncovered by joy. In 30 seconds, please. And then people would not even been punished, according mm. to your investigation. So what signal are we sending out there when basic services are not funded? It's a huge problem. And then the parliamentary ceiling is flouted with impunity. I see. Now, uh, Mutala, you, you have been, you've seen it all. Um, 
how do you guys explain what is happening, particularly in Jeddah, where you have uh, managers who have been caught to have, together with, you know, in concert with banks, you know, stash monies into different accounts and open the accounts and all of that. And yet, we don't have anybody uh, being punished. Well, something. let me first and foremost uh, uh, congratulate Manasi Azure for that, Azu Azure. Azure, mm. for that investigative journalism. And I think that he did very well, and I think that he ought to be encouraged, just as we encourage my good friend, Anas Armiyaw Anas. I think that this young man is also doing very well. Uh, I think it's also important for us to look at... Can you speak the, up a bit for me? It's also important for mm. us to look at the entire deficit, government deficit in context. Yes, every, singly, every single minister or agency had some overspending. And almost all of them explained what occasioned the overspending. One of the reasons why most agencies or ministries had overspending was because of the payment of the areas of single spine. Mm. Most agencies and ministries, the payment of the areas of single spine. This was something that was supposed to be implemented in five years. Then government had to implement it within two years. And therefore, you needed to pay that. And that occasion, the single span alone, if you take the budget, the deficit, about 1.3% of the budget deficit that we have was occasioned because of the payment of the single span. So we need to state that. It's also very important for Nana Kumia. He made a point, and I'm happy that he once worked with the NYP was under his jurisdiction. They had about five or six models. Now, if now you can boost of about 31 models, clearly, clearly, more expenditure. 31 uh, important models. Yes, very, very important. Essential. Very, very. And because the, the criticism, again, is that <coughs> you were just using that vehicle to create I'll, jobs I'll for I'll tell you party why. people, for soldiers. Something, I'll tell you why that model is, the 31 models are, are very important and critical. Now, now, Kumia knows that one of the challenges of the NYEP was because of non-payment of allowances of beneficiaries. And when they left office, under his watch, we were saddled with a debt of 24 billion at the Agri Development Bank. That is not to justify what debt we have today, because the sources of funding to the program was something that was not forthcoming. Sometimes it's, it's a challenge. You don't, you don't get the money and others. Now, if you look at the 31 models that were created, they are all capacity building and skill training. That was the vision of the program when they introduced it. But I can understand that the implementation needed to be done systematic. So at the time that they were no longer in office and the NDC took over, clearly NDC needed to continue with the vision that those who started the program had. That, yes, you have to create temporary jobs for young people, but you're also looking at building the capacity of young people. The NYEP is not meant for only those with formal education. Even those without formal education ought also to benefit from the program. And I think that that, that explains it. Now, on the issue of budget deficit, it's a concern to everybody. And I can state that even at the Finance Committee, all of us, regardless of the political party, says that, look, budget deficit have happened. The eight years that NPP was in power, we had budget deficit every single year, overspending, every single year. NDC, we've had that. That is not to justify what NDC is doing. Let me say, each one of you is doing five minutes on this subject. We will move on, and, I, and I'll yeah. insist you end yeah. on the point. But... Can you then, you know, structure your argument straight to the issue that you are discussing so that you don't take it uh, uh, beyond that? No, I'm not. You're dealing with N NYEP yeah. or JEDA Something now. I've, I've explained why we have the huge spend. In fact, it's not even up to 200 million as it's been reported. The total expenditure was 190, 90 million, 190 million. If you take away what was appropriated for the ministry, Take it away from the 190. It's not even. What do you know the is the reason the people who have been indicted have not yes, have I would, been prosecuted? Yes, I, would, I wanted to just look at this. But let me come to the issue. This was an allegation that we had. And we decided as management that we needed to have some investigation into those allegations. In fact, a committee was sent to Ashanti region to investigate. The committee investigated. This investigation was sanctioned by the national coordinator. And then they submitted their report. The national coordinator then informed, by all of us as management, the minister, and the minister constituted investigation too. And then investigation was done. Some actions were taken. It's important for people to get this. The deputy regional coordinator for NYP in Ashanti was sacked and he was made to pay money. 
In fact, he paid some monies. And you can find out from the security agency, police particularly, in Kumasi. Some district coordinators were also sacked. But however, the minister then said that because of what we suspect, that people could not go to open accounts in the name of NYEP, in any banks without the connivance of authorities at the bank. That was why the case was referred to the national security. And we're not looking at only Ashanti region. Then we then said at management that, look, this thing could be going on in other regions. So we didn't have the capacity. The national security had the capacity to have done that investigation. And as I talked to you, the national security hasn't informed us that they finished with their investigation. We are mind aware you, of that. Mind you, mind you, the national security, when they did their investigation, I, I resigned from NYP to contest them. But the last time I checked, the national security was looking at in the whole system. Now, if we were to look at what happened in Kumasi, <coughs> then maybe probably in Ashanti region, if we were to look at what happened in Ashanti region, then we must as well not even talk about that investigation. But however, you need to give people that, that opportunity so that they can also be given fair, fair, if you like, investigation. Because if you investigate and you sanction, some of them said that the conclusion that we came to as management and the ministry was something that was not right, mm. and therefore they needed thorough investigation to be conducted. The national security went into mm. it. They indeed investigated, and they said that they are extending it to other regions so that we would know whether this thing is a scheme. Because if you identify this rot in one particular place, and then it's possible that members or those who work in the various banks would have hands. Because something, the, the accounts opened by any beneficiary is his private and individual accounts. Mm. Now, how can someone have access to accounts to take money? And in any case, if you're opening accounts in the name of NYEP, the national coordinator is not aware, the minister is not aware, then why would you even open such an account to the extent that monies can be transferred? from beneficiaries' allowances to it. So it's a very huge issue. That is called fraud. Exactly. So mm. that is why the national security had to investigate. I am not aware that the national security indeed finished with their investigation and submitted the reports to NYF. The last time I left, I was not aware that the reports were submitted by the national security on the investigation. What I do know was that the national security was still investigating, that they were looking at it in other regions and other districts mm. to see the extent to which people are engaged in it. Okay, maybe typical of this country where investigations would take years to do, and sometimes it's announced, you never hear of the results anyway. The police come to tell you are investigating something, you never hear what the investigations ended uh, in. Now, uh, Mr. Thompson, as you hear him, from the perspective of, of, of a legal practitioner, somebody's committed fraud, all you do to them is that you hit them with a little a stick and you say, okay, pay the money back and get out of the job. Is that what ought to be happening? Um, let, me, let, let me approach your question from, from a perspective based on the information I've got on this issue. Um, I, I take it fair from the comments, good point he made that we need some institutional reforms and it should also be a continuing process. I'm, I'm therefore very glad that, I mean, was it on Abu Kapele? Yeah. that some, some process was put in to find out really what has gone wrong and the rest. I must, however, caution that in whatever we do, we should, not, we should never tramp on the rights of people. These are members of the public service, and therefore there's a need to bear in mind the rules of the public service in investigating these things. Because the information I'm having is that Although some investigation took place, things came up, issues have been have, have really um, arise as to the procedures which were being used and the rest. And this, this is a constitutional error. So you may get a thief, but he could use a lapse in procedure to get away. But first of right. all, we are aware that they have been offered the opportunity where, may, where I, you are I, coming I, from, I, if I should I, preempt I, you, uh, natural justice, the rules of natural justice. They have been given the opportunity. They have been heard. And they are conclusive um, reports. Unfortunately, unfortunately, mm. unfortunately, what I'm hearing uh, is that these issues have, have also come up. You get me? This may also have, have prompted the minister to act swiftly to say that, look, if the bucket is leaking, there's no need to put more, more money into it. Stop on certain issues, apart from administrative and whole areas, and then let's set up a strong team to go into it and find out what it is. Because honestly, I think Nana, who's been there, will agree with me that if you're a minister and they are bringing these things to you to approve, 
it's very difficult to vouch out the authenticity of what is in it. At the first, uh, at the first second, and third levels of investigations yes. all involve the taxpayers' money. We need another investigation to come and tell of, us the of, same. Of, 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 to come and tell us the same thing. Rather, unfortunately, willy-nilly, that's the way government is. People also have rights. You get me? Is that is that efficiency? Is that the best use of the that public money? That is also a form of achieving the ultimate goal, right? You can talk of four, five investigations, but if you don't do it properly, you get me? If you miss the boat, if you don't follow procedures, right, all that <coughs> you've done can be set aside. Let's get something straight. In the report uh, that uh, Manasseh should, did, some of them actually admitted they owned up. That's why I'm saying that there are some few, there are some issues there on issues of procedure based on what I had as at yesterday. But what I'm saying is that I'm happy that the process of institutional reform is ongoing so far as this, this program is going. Because it's a very critical program for the country, right? And we need to open our eyes widely over there. I pity the ministers on such issues because at your level, when these things are coming to you, whether they are ghost names or double payments, it might be a little bit difficult to see, right? But the fact that Elvis has acted so swiftly is really gladdening. Mm. And it also adds some credence also, some support to the work being done by our journalists. That a journalist finds something and the minister acted quickly. But you see, I think we should look at all this issue of overspending from a bigger picture. And another reason the issue of deficit financing, right, in this country. And you see, if you like, watch the train, and I think it came out one of your programs. Every election year comes with. The, the following year of a huge deficit, right? And we make so much noise the first year as we are doing in 2013. We will make another noise in 2014. Nothing is done. The parliament itself, right? And I, I would like to take my good friends from parliament. What are they doing as a check on this issue, right? Somebody spoke about, mm. I'll link, link, link it to somebody. A, a link with somebody. somebody spoke about min, no more of ministers and race. And I've made a point that the countries we compare ourselves, the way they run the government is not what we are doing. You get me? Do you know that in the UK, the, 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 the penultimate year before the election year, there's an inter-party meeting in Czechos, right, to, to decide on what is the allowable government deficit because they know it is an election year, right? Let's be very honest about the whole issue. The election year will always put some pressure on this youth program. Because whether you like it or not, it's a mechanism okay. for employing uh, the youth who are going to... And, and the bigger question, though, you, you seem to have raised it uh, slightly. Is it, is it not really the question about the fact that the ministers and those who are in charge of this money know that, after all, all the parliament will require of me will, will be to come and explain it away? Because, like Nana said, if there is overspending, and you also noted, it's something that occurs mm. all the time. Mm. Should it stop at the point of simply coming to explain that this is what I had to mm. do? In the face of the fact that what you have done appears a bit illegal, isn't that the case? Because they are, you, are, you are acting beyond the appropriation bill. Yeah, but, but you see, the point I'm saying, what happened to shared responsibility? Right. We always create the impression that it is only the executive wing which is supposed to make sure that there's no deficit. What I'm saying is that Parliament has a bigger role to play. It is not enough to come and sit down public accounts committee in the full glare of, of television, grandstanding, showmanship, going into these things and we stop. We're not doing, we're not helping each other. I see. You, you understand me? Let's <laughs> approach the issue from the wider angle of the huge deficits we incur. Deficits will be incurred. That one is not a problem. It depends on where it goes to. Mm. Right. But where you have deficits arising from recurrent expenditure, salaries, and the rest, we have a problem. All right. The institutional reform has started somewhere from the ministerial point of view. But let's take it from a, a, a higher perspective. Idris, Idris Odum writes, indeed, bravo to the sports minister for halting payments to NYEP. Is Jeddah now beneficiaries? I know of seven ghost names. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> Is it at a Bojasi or where DA uh, District Assembly Basic School? Is that it? They are not teachers in the school but they take payments for the job they are doing under the JEDA.
please let's have those names. You are a citizen of this country. You have a responsibility to also help the state. Adam in Savligu writes, auditors should audit the Savligu Nanton District Jeda coordinator for massive corruption. You haven't said anything. <laughs> Do more than that. Uh, Kaba Edward from San Kore writes, this, the issue of Jeda is not a ghost one, but real. And there is even more to it than the Manasseh investigations. People like Manasseh and Anas should spread their tentacles to some GES district offices and the nation will be shocked about how new teachers are recruited. I cannot believe that 15 million... Okay, we'll go into that later. And Abdul Malik Kubaku Jr., you have the opportunity now. We are doing five minutes each on this issue. And it appears that there are people who have some information and they are all referring to the a, a teaching module of the, prog of the program. Well, I, I, I'd be honest with you. I haven't conducted an in-depth investigation mm. into this matter, but I've been following the investigations that your station and... Uh, our own friend, uh, journalist of the year, did, which I think was impressive. Uh, you know, I really don't s see why we are beating about the bush. Mm. First and foremost, this thing about budget deficit and rooting it in the single spine, I have a problem with it. What is the percentage of the single spine element in the overall budget deficit. We, how much? 1.3. So what are we talking about? But there are the No, so what are we talking there about? Are the no, 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 please, please. Maybe I would want to have 1.3 yeah. is the input, yeah. the percentage input of the single spine. So I'm not sure why that should be highlighted as the reason why we have this 12 point something percent deficit. That's the point I'm making, that it is, it is really not come uh, on. And in any case, we are also told that it's a five-year program, which I know was the original thing, if you look at the white paper and the original format, and the government had to compress it. Is that a valid point to make? For what reason? Did the leadership decide to compress a five-year package into two so as to create unnecessary pressure on the economy? I, I don't buy that too. It's a decision the leadership decided to take. Because there was agitation. You, you there were agitations by public sector workers. Serious agitation. And in fact, it's not even true. It is not even true that the five-year thing was compressed. Mm. If you go and check the way it's been drafted yeah. and how, it's not true. You understand? So that is another <laughs> uh, rationalization. And because he's sitting here, and I don't want I mean any offense. It's inept. <laughs> you understand? It's inexcusable. And I'm, I don't mean to mm. offend you, please uh, forgive me for that. I mean the general explanation, because you are not the one who has made this explanation. The, 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 only is that, the reason it. is that if you don't get the other elements that constitute, even the 12.1%, the 6% deficit of the last financial year is used as a base. So you are talking about 6%, not even 12%. Now, if you take 1.3% out of the 6%, take what was spent on the gang of six. Projects that government executed with I'm coming. You made the statement give, about single spine. I wanted to give spine. you the percentages, and you realize that it's not only the single spine. The deficit was occasioned, if you take away the single spine, 1.3 out of 6%. You know what? Take away that. I, I have not discussed the general <laughs> deficit. You made the statement. Yeah. You were trying to root the difficulty relative to the deficit to the single spine. And that's why I asked no, the it's question. No, just one. That was of, the, yeah, but of, that's of why I proceeded. So where you are going, I haven't gone there. Okay. To be honest with you. Now, this whole Jedi thing, look, the mushrooming of the models is the basis for the corruption that we are talking about. People just decided to launch all sorts of uh, models at a short time, within a short space of time. <laughs> First of all, the question is the capacity to monitor, to evaluate, to manage. Was it there? Or was it just the idea that let's launch models and let's tell people that we are expanding their program? And there was a lot of propaganda in that aspect of the whole thing. We have expanded, we've inherited the NYAP, it wasn't properly done, we have come, we are doing it new, fresh, and that these are the new models. If you don't develop the requisite capacity to manage the mushrooming, that's what happens. 
You can't monitor. You can't evaluate. You can't supervise. The cost is corruption. Massive corruption. That's what it is. This is barefaced corruption. <laughs> The question, the point about investigations that have been conducted, I'm now hearing from my brother Ernest that some procedures and things were violated here and there. Well, I don't know. I'll be honest. This, I mean, that's what I heard yesterday. this is the first time I'm yes. hearing this. Listen, what stops us from relaunching a serious investigations into all those matters? In a very short space of time. We don't need much. Don't we have auditors? First of all, do we have a statement of accounts from Jeddah? Do we have, I'm sure the funds are public funds, so they are audited by the Auditor General. Conduct an audit or a forensic audit if you like, and punish and sanction. That's all. There's no need for this to become a subject matter for protracted radio discourse. I'm being honest with you. Mm. That's what we do all the time and then there's no solution. I'm telling you, this is bare-faced corruption. It's just like the sports one. Okay? And that has been the characteristic of management practices at the sports ministry for years. I'm told the Speaker of Parliament was so shocked that he had to admit that this thing cannot be hidden anywhere. Because mm. the Minister of State was trying to stop an MP from making a disclosure. No. Well, I was on the floor. What happened? It has to do with the Maputo. Yes, and that's what I'm talking mm. about. The, I've that, shifted. No, no, that, you heard me. I was that, talking of Maputo. That, no, that, okay. so he said he's moved on from there. So I let him finish. We should let him finish his point. Yeah, that's what we are doing. Who are, that's what, that's what we are doing. And you the, had five the guidance minutes to do so. I got from the okay. host was, I was boxing there. That's, the two. All right, <laughs> okay. that's it. That's what he said. I heard him right. Actually, you are done with your time. I'll finish with Jida because I thought I shouldn't waste too much time on it. So do a minute. The same with the sports. Look, some of the names, and I will not go personal, I won't mention the names here. But some of the names that I've seen in their report and the media report, these are recycled people who had problems at the sports ministries some years ago. Became public controversy. We come because of political connections, nepotism, patronage. Some of those people were reinstated, restored, or recycled. They are the same names here. It's dirty, it's crude. The Maputo thing is amazing. Again, there's no need for too much talk. Unless we are told, again, my brother, I don't know if they're to the evaluated procedures. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because he's right on the terms of the principle, you see. If you evaluate somebody's if you, yeah. yeah, he can go to court and be thrown away. So I'm not underestimating what he's saying. But perhaps, is that also not deliberate? Why do we do, don't we have the system, the laws that set up committees of inquiry? The other question will be, but for Manasseh's expose, what would have happened? Thank you. There had been two or three investigations, we are told. Some people were reinstated, but I'm told as chief director. Yes, I was with you on the program, and you considered that some people were reinstated. No, or re no, re Randy, Randy said I never said it. So you don't know about I that? I said, as far as I'm concerned, by the time I left there, no one was reinstated. Some have left Indeed. that job and gone to another government job. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. <laughs> Again, I am told, in fact, as for Jedi and this thing, it's political patronage. <laughs> All right, Koku, thank you very That's much. That's what uh, it is. People are being covered up. All right. Look, something, can I do um, this? Quick, gentlemen. Quick 30 seconds. 30, 30 seconds. Se 30 seconds. I'll keep you to that one. Rand, uh, something, on the issue of what happened even at Jedi, I did indicate that these people were, were investigated. They were interdicted. The interdiction was as a result of the investigation sanctioned by the Minister for Youth and Sports. Yes, sir. Then the Minister then realized that the problem had happened in one district. It's possible that we could have similar problems in other districts. Therefore, national security take charge of the investigation. How but I'm coming, mm -hmm. I'm coming. You are talking about all districts, about 197 districts in the country. 
But that's to, a very legitimate I'm, question. No, yes, I agree. I'm saying how that. Long ago? I'm, yes, that is one thing we, maybe we can interrogate. So that if I'm Manasseh saying, by Joy time, FM had not gone into by the time, it, would all no, no, no. By the time you know, when you say if Manasseh had not gone, I commended mm. Manasseh for that. But if you say he hadn't, that's correct. It, was, yeah. it wouldn't be it wouldn't be fair because some sanctions were actually uh, 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 made. I mean, some investigation was done. People were sanctioned. Some were asked to pay money. Some were interdicted. Members of at the management That's level. That's also the question well, I'm I coming. Ask I'm coming. We're interdicted. You catch a thief Samson. and you say, look, uh, I'm saying you that bring my team. Samson, they submitted the report. They submitted the report. Then some of us resigned NYEP before the elections. Now, we just finished with an elections. <laughs> and now the national security is doing nationwide investigation. Mm. Are you getting the point I'm making? I think that we should just give the national security that chance. To see. But some actions, actions were taken by the then minister for youth and sports. Some were sanctioned, some were asked to pay it money, okay. and I told you. Thank but on you. the issue of the Maputo, 30 seconds. no minister was trying to hide. The Maputo, no minister was trying to hide anything. The, the, what happened in Parliament was that it wasn't discussed at the committee level. And Honorable Asiyama brought it up. And I can remember Honorable Woyumi said, look, this issue we never dis Yet the speaker said, look, I have seen the reports. It's damning. The minister's response. He said that, yes, the reports have been brought to my attention. And we want to look at it. Mm. That was what the minister said. Thank you. Elvis All right. That's not him, the one I'm talking about. Um, but which one? Let, let me. <laughs> I have told our old friend, uh, Mahama Yarga, try to stop uh, Isiyama from making a no, 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 statement. No, no, no. Then, and the speaker, he's reported. Which paper? Which report? Oh, it's here. You give that. Joy gave it to us. Yeah. It's here. All right. Am I right? At, yeah, at you no are. point in time did he it's try here. to stop We have the report here. It's here. Have Joy, you reported that he was trying to stop please, please. This I is, was in the floor. Eh? Look, let, let, let him, let let him me, read. Let him read. Uh, it says, uh, embarrassing as the report was, the Information and Media Relations Minister, Mahama Yarega, attempted to prevent Isaac Isiyama, who is also the MP for Ituwa Mpua, from commenting on it. Ituwa However, Ituwa yes, I'm sorry. However, Speaker Jaho responded, saying, Mr. Minister, I have looked at the report, and I tell you the report is damning. Without taking part in the debate, corruption is corruption. I thought that as a minister who is part of government, you should rather get a report and make sure the people cited are brought to book. No, Thank you. No, he Thank never you attempted. Did this happen? Or the, did no, the happen? bit I don't is want. It, he never attempted it, stopping him. No, but this, this, Parliament, this, Parliament is not on radio. Why you can just make any statement? No, 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 you, are, you are being told what the, the, what the speaker no, But what I'm saying, saying is that Parliament is not just you make a statement and go scot free. Okay. He never attempted to stop him. All right, gentlemen. Gentlemen, we have to stop at a point. No, but I think we should be fair. Let's give the minister a chance to do a comprehensive work. No, because when you read... No, when you, what he did, but when you read the statement okay, so like that, he said, said it, then no, matter. he never the, attempted to stop him. All right. When you get up and make a statement that is factually inaccurate, thank you. We'll what, take the, what the Mama Yerga did. It, the no, speaker's no, comment as reported. No, but the headline is that at, he said attempted what to stop him. Saying? No, attempted to stop him. He never attempted to stop Honorable Asiyama from. He, he made certain statements. He thought that those statements were inaccurate. That's okay. the point. Thank now, you. Now, if you read it, he attempted thank to you. stop Thank Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And gentlemen, play to my whistle. It's very important. And sometimes uh, after this show, I get out there. I get very, very well-meaning, important personalities in this country. I go to court and I get judges telling me, keep them to it. You need to work by the time. <laughs> two, two, yeah. two quick points. In this matter of single spy. I mean, the entire deficit was uh, 8.7 billion. Single spy was just 1.9. So there's still over 6.8 billion deficits. So you can't explain it away. Okay. If you look at the overspent, made that point. if you look at the overspent, at the pre Office of the Government Machinery, the Ministry of Youth and Sports, and all of those, uh, NADMO and so on, there are more than one, that 1.9 billion paid to single spy. Mm. So it is not the single spy that has brought the deficit. Election year 2004, you didn't have this kind of deficit. What, what was the deficit? Two percent. You are twin deficits. Two, two per, no, election year, please listen carefully, 2004. Election year 2008, you had a deficit of 6.8 percent. The NDC said it was reckless. It was profligate, arrears of 2 billion. Today, you have a deficit of 12.1. You have arrears of 5.4. The, the so are we going forward? No, can I, are, we going, are, we, are we going? Are we, no, are we, are we going? Tell, are we have going, been able to tell you that this is the deficit as a result of this? You have, because Allah, you are Allah, you couldn't tell allow us. Allow you see? Allah, 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 so, yeah, yeah, look at him. Now, you see, you had a deficit of 2% in 2004. In 2008, we all knew the oil price and, and, the, and the drought and the stress for our energy and so on. But it was 6.8. You said it was reckless. Arrears of 2 billion. You said it was profligate. 
four years down the line, you have a deficit of 12.1. You have arrears of 5.4. Thank you very much. Four. Thank so you, So why Nana. are we going as thank a country? You, we are going uh, backwards. Thank you, Nana. You see, you see, um, no, no, no. I think, I think you should let us, let us come. Yeah. Let me come. You see? Okay. I'm giving you, you see, the very just, final just, 30 just seconds. Just give me 30 seconds. Yes. You see, very final you, one. You see, where, whenever there's a deficit and these issues are raised, depending on which government is in power, there's an attempt to explain it. Somebody will say, oh, let's not look no, at the figure. The quantum, let's, not let's, the no, no. You know, the quantum uh, itself in finance. No, Nana. The quantum itself in finance. You get me? Might not be, might not mean much. The, what is important is where did the deficit go? Go. Oh. You, you we can't understand right. it. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where no. did it go? Let me show the map. Yeah, 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 let, 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 let me tell you what what is, what yes, what, yeah, what, what some of our viewers. See, my problem is that some of our viewers and listeners are saying. Um, Agbleta Emmanuel says, "My challenge with NDC is that when the table turned against them, you will see them trying everything to make demons look like angels." They're still trying to defend why overspending in the various ministries are justified. Uh, it's justified. Um, Benjamin says, it is very sad that a government that uh, pledged to cut down costing and give the nation value for money can resort uh, in such crass uh, profligate expenditure. Do they not care if the ordinary Ghanaian suffers? Okay, let your text be specific to any of the topics that we are discussing. Kojo Nyameche in Tamale writes, Motola is only changing the goalpost and seeking refuge where no such exists in places like Nantong, Paga, and, <laughs> and others, where he had top officials of the program contesting as MPs. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Gentlemen, we are not going to that issue anymore. We are moving on. Uh, to the question that has come up about Guinea files and 15 million Ghana cities being invested into a certain Guinea files project. A total of 47 million Ghana cities into Guinea files and afforestation in the savanna zones. Questions are being asked. Real, uh, good business move or... We are just out to be swindled. Um, we will take this very final break and return to look at that issue. Thank you very much and welcome. This is News File the most authoritative news analysis show, and we put Ghana first. Now, this show is brought to you by the kindest sponsorship of MTN Everywhere You Go and Star Assurance. Um, they've got very juicy, nice uh, packages for you, insurance packages, marine and moto, all of them. Just make sure you contact Star Assurance, and they'll give you a package that you would love and be grateful for. Now, before I move to the next issue, I need to put out that... Uh, the media, the Information and Media Relations Minister, Mahama Yarga, wants it to be on record that he never attempted to prevent the presentation. That is what he's telling me, that he never attempted to prevent uh, the presentation. Um, now, Something. let's go Something. and talk about uh, the guinea fowl that has been fouled. Um, is it... <laughs> um, is it good business being presented by the opposition mischievously, misguidedly to a rash media and a gullible citizenry as a smacking of corruption? I want to start first with Abdul Malik on this subject. <coughs> I'm sure that you're aware. So this is how we're doing it. We'll do both the 47 million Ghana cities is going into the Guinea project and also the afforestation. And people are asking, where are the trees? And now I confirm no way. Is it, <laughs> is it the case that we don't clearly understand what the project is about and we are in a rush to crucify an otherwise <coughs> good business? I see the way you put it. Ne I confirm no way. 
left on its own, quote unquote, can create a lot of problems. If you don't have facts. For an otherwise mm. positive venture. So one has to be careful. I, of course, also had a lot of it in the media, radio, TV, newspapers. And then I decided to do some checks because there was a lot of passion and emotion and also a certain level of uh, lack of uh, information. And the mixture was such an explosive one. Mm. And, you know, people are taking positions already. So if you are not even careful, you yourself, people misread you. What is it that happened on the floor of the house? What was it that was before parliament? I asked myself. I am told it was the budget estimates that said that. If I'm wrong, Mutala, you can correct me immediately, mm. that they had gone to present. That was the understanding I had. So if it was, then it means they are asking for money for 2013. <clears throat> and in the process, this question of what did you do with some monies that you had 2012 came. I am not sure that there was a presentation of an audited account of SADA before parliament. I'm That's not where sure. the SADA board says that the MP who brought this out from the media has been unfair to him. That's what he said. Okay, I didn't hear that, but my view is that before parliament was not an audited account of SADA. So I draw a distinction between the budget estimates and the audited accounts. Of course, if you have hinted about some expenditure or monies that came your way, it's legitimate for parliament to ask questions, mm. any member of parliament. I like the spirit in terms of the parliamentary oversight that we've all complained about that has been weak. So I like the spirit, but the spirit should be driven and handled in a way that will produce results, positive results. So there are two things. When I realized that it was not audited accounts, so to be premature to judge in terms of the expenditure, the, whether the expenditure was properly done or not properly done, I think is premature for even parliament mm. to arrive at that conclusion. So I asked myself, check for documentations, which I did. Now I realized that this 15 million that we are talking about has not gone to do what you did. I confirm no way. Apparently it's been invested as a 40% share in a joint venture company. True or false? That is true. So it means that the money is not missing. The money has not gone into a bottomless hole. <laughs> but the money is an investment in a joint venture company. Does the company exist or it doesn't exist? It doesn't is exist. It, you are aware? Yes. It was incorporated um, on the 28th. 4th of December, I understand. Yeah. 4th uh, of the December, agreement was 28th November 2012, mm. incorporated December 4th, 2012. And the commencement, they got a commencement certificate, certificate 5th December 2012. We're talking 2012 December, November December. And the company is Sada Asuntaba Guinea Fowl Production and Marketing Company Limited. It's so, Asuntaba, it's not Asuntaba. And Asuntaba in where I come from means help, help each other. Okay, I'm, I'm not sure I'll be able to pronounce <laughs> it very well, <laughs> okay. so forgive me. Mm. But whatever it is, we are now talking from November to March. Is it six months or four or five months? No. I am not sure that this time frame, this pace and time, it's five months. It's enough basis to proceed to do even auditing. Even though if once there's a controversy, I would suggest that parliamentary, the appropriate committee should immediately get all the facts, get all the personnel and companies involved, and get the facts and figures clear, and indeed even disclose to the public. This is because there's a controversy. But if we're talking of business, commencing business, and we have the legitimate timelines. A company, a joint company has been, uh, uh, they've signed an agreement. Mm. I was able to 
intercept a copy of the agreement, all those things, timelines are clear, then I'll be honest with you, it's too early for anybody to jump to conclusions. Is the business viable? Where feasibility studies conducted to establish that this is a viable business. The guinea fowl business, does it have the potential to grow, particularly if it is lifted to a level of modern production? Does it or it doesn't? I realized that the company, the Azon Health, Azon, Azon Taba, Azon Taba mm. had already been in that business and indeed was producing to the capacity of about 12,000 beds annually. It began with, 25, well, what I have is they began with 4,000 capacity thing, but they were doing 12,000 annual. That's the figure I have. Mm -hmm. I may be wrong. But that, that was on their own doing that business. Then SADA decides to partner them. It is not unusual for SADA or any other state agency to partner a private entity to do business. In a way, I see this thing within the context of the PSI concept that the NPP administration launched. It was a very powerful concept. It is how you manage it, the areas you identify, and grow local industry and enterprise. So in principle, I am all for it. My research also shows that it's a very viable and feasible business. At this stage, the investment is not, has not been dissipated. It is obvious. Parliament is capable of doing this particular scrutiny, doing this evaluation, and give us the details. So I think it's a bit unfortunate mm. that the thing has been brought down to the level of ridicule. Ne a confemno wehe. Then I heard somebody say, I confirm why we need it. And so it was serious. If the Ghanaian hears that a 15 million Ghana CD investment has been put in some Guinea, and they thought it was the, like, it's, it's the, the traditional mood. Mm. And I have some pictures here. If you go the way some huts, uh, mud houses, and they are building, the, uh, growing that confirms it, you can't do much with that. You have to integrate congregate, consolidate, and bring in modern machines and equipment. And there are many things that I'm told. These days I'm told the pillowcases that we sleep on, the feathers of this are confirmed is what is crushed to do it. And it's for export as well. So to be honest with you, if we were to take out the ugly noises, the ugly politicization, the emotive elements, and focus properly, there will be no controversy. Let's begin by asking Parliament to exercise its oversight responsibility beyond what happened in the House. Go on a spot, check the five regions, the bought lands. Have the lands been bought? We have the statutory institutions that deal with those things. There will be evidence, documentary, to show that they've bought the lands. I'm told they've ordered some equipment. There should be documentary evidence to that effect. And I'm told there are. So let Parliament be seized with this information. And let Parliament then disclose to the nation. Because you see, SADA is a very important project. Mm. I've always bagged it. Because I bagged the Northern Reg uh, Development Authority thing. And if you go and look at the acts, the only difference really is that SADA expanded its scope, coverage, in terms of the geography. Essentially, the concepts and the principles were the same. And I'm sure you know that. I brought the two acts here. And if you look at the parliamentary hands had, there was also a consensus mm. across the political divide for the Northern Regional, uh, the, is it Northern Regional Development Authority. Mm. There was a consensus. Somehow the NDC, three administration, decided, and it was within their right. So I'm not saying that as a way of contesting. But it was within their right to expand the coverage and bring in some parts of the Brongahafu region and I think the Volta region to make SADA. So the principle remains the same. I back Northern Regional Development Authority, I still back SADA. And mm. I think it must succeed, but we must be very vigilant 
in monitoring it, in evaluating it, uh, and in supervising it. And I believe the spirit that Parliament is showing now is a positive one. It should be properly managed, properly channeled. Um, Mutala, the other aspect of the questioning really is that it may be good business, it may be an ideal thing, good thing to go into, but the amount of money that is being sunk into the project by government through SADA, how do you explain that? I'm reading some of the documents they're talking about, you know, commercializing uh, uh, guinea fowl production and the equipment that they are going to purchase, you know, will be spread in over 50 districts of the SADA zone, you know, SADA ecological zones. Um, but question is, the amount of money going to it, 15 uh, million Ghana cities. How do you justify that? Something first and foremost, I, I think that it's important for me to make some preliminary comments. Mm. Uh, I happen to be a member of the finance committee, and this thing was brought to our committee. Uh, the unfortunate thing that happened was that the chief executive himself was not there. It was an officer of, of SADA who represented him. Where the chief executive officer then was with the vice president in northern Ghana. They were visiting areas that were hit by the rain, the rainstorm. So when the gentleman came, he admitted that he had just been employed and that he didn't have that requisite, if you like, knowledge or understanding with regards to some of the things he appeared to. So the committee resolved that they were not going to deal with him until the chief executive himself appeared before the committee. Some questions were raised. Again, uh, the issue of how much was spent, like we said that he, t he is not aware of any audit auditor's report. It wasn't. Every ministry or agency, once you appear... That, that's not exactly what I said. That's okay. Said within, the within the short term. Yeah. No, I mean, the first... The first and, I'm, and I'm not trying to, to challenge what you said. I'm just adding something to it. Every agency that appears before the committee, you need to submit a document indicating how much was appropriated and how much was, was spent. And then when they appeared before the committee, the document is a public document. It is made available to all members. Mind you, the committee is made up of both majority and minority. In fact, Dr. Akuto is the ranking member of the Finance Committee. And after that, the document is made available to every single member of, of Parliament. Now, when he appeared, he couldn't give us the, the kind of response that we had. Then when the chief executive himself appeared before the committee, and that is where I think that my good friend, the gentleman from the opposition, and the kind of questions the opposition is asking is not being fair to the SADA boss and also to the project that is being executed. You had the opportunity to ask the kind of questions you would have asked. He appeared before us for almost one hour. Now, if you didn't ask any question, it isn't that it was just done on us. I told you that someone came three days later, he came. By that time, the documents were available. All the questions that people would have asked were with every single member of parliament. So if he appeared, then you had any questions you could have asked. Yet yeah, those questions were not asked. Unfortunately, they were yeah, asked. You're not suggesting that after that, if he stumbled or some other question, he has no right to ask. The questions, being asked, the questions being asked are questions that were captured in the document that was submitted to us on the very first day we met without the chief executive. Now, now if we said that we needed the chief executive himself to appear because we asked certain questions that we're not getting the needed response, the chief executive himself appeared. We didn't ask him those questions. Now, only for those same questions to be asked in the radio, I don't think that that is a, a, a good practice. Again, guinea fowl, you and I know, is supposed to be a delicacy. Unfortunately, it is not. Every young boy who is growing in northern Ghana or young girl, particularly in the, in the rural areas, you, would, you take the growing of, of, of guinea fowls or chicken as, as it's like a tradition. Even those of us who were born and bred in Tamale, we had some. Now, many of the communities in the rural areas, their livelihood to a very large extent depend on guinea fowl. In fact, they survive on guinea fowl during the off-farm mm -hmm. seasons. That is when they are not going to farm, they don't have any vocation. That is what they, they survive on. Now, if you look at the, the agreement that was entered into, and I agree with Kweku absolutely, the impression is created as if the monies, the monies were used to buy guinea fowl. Some even say chinchinga, and I don't think that, that that is right. This is an investment. You invest, it's a joint partnership. In fact, the Asuntaba Group has committed 25 million Ghana cities into the project. Now, government committed 15 million Ghana cities into the project. Now, if you invested and the investment started in 2012, you know 
If you want to rear guinea fowl, how long does it take a guinea fowl we, to, we have to seen, do? We have seen in some of the, the documents that are coming forward so yeah. far yeah. that this is the equity contribution, this is the, the bot shares, this, this hammer, this one. But do we know for a fact that, you know, each party has fulfilled their, you know, obligations I, I, I can tell, as far as paying the money? I can tell you for a fact that indeed each party, if you look at the kind of things that they have, they have, they are important, the hatcheries, the incubators, if you know the kind of equipment that are important, then you would understand that more than 15 million Ghana cities has been expended. Mind you, the northern region one, the land we alone, need, need exactly, the northern region one, the land alone is almost about, about five acres. Now, it is not easy just getting a land. You are buying a land for, you are either buying or renting a land for a project. Because guinea fowls are not like ordinary fowls. They, they are like, they are wild animals who, by, by some reason, they have been domesticated. They fly. Many mm. people do not know that guinea fowls fly. Fowls, I don't think that they do, you know. And again, if you look at the guinea fowl we eat in Accra, something. I always ensure that I have guinea fowl in Accra, and I buy the guinea fowl from Tamale. They, they, are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are expecting to grow or to rear and produce yeah. 25,000 guinea fowls annually. Yeah by this project yeah. 250,000. Uh, 250, at the moment, the company is producing 25,000. Okay, I yeah. know that at the moment they are doing 12,000 or so. That is um, before they... Good, good. good. But to. this is what they want to do, 250,000 yeah. annually yeah. for five years. And they are engaging outgrowers and yeah. other people where we have information suggesting they have met quite a good number of them, 300 or so. Yeah. Question is, 15,000 a million Ghana cities from SADA. And uh, SADA, uh, Asan Tabe's contribution. Okay, it's 25 million. Yes. Yeah. Is this the amount of money you need for this project? You see, as the project expands, I believe that they would even need more. But you know one interesting thing? Let's get something. It is not just coming out, it's not just coming out with such a project, something. It is also to create jobs. If you take the SADA zone, ecological area, mm. The three northern regions and northern part of Brown Hafu and northern part of Volta region, apart from central region, are the poorest in the country. And like I told you, guinea fowls are red. The people, apart from the, the rainy seasons, unfortunately, they have only one rainy season. So once you plant your seeds and once you harvest, within three, four months, you don't have anything doing. I'll tell you one interesting thing. Majority of those who come to southern part of the country, young men and, and, and women, to look for jobs that are non-available, they do that during the off-farm seasons. Now, they will come with the intention that the moment rain starts, we'll go back. Unfortunately, some of them do not even go back. The jobs that will be created by this program exactly. is 1,500. That is for a start. And you see, that is what I'm saying. If you create one job for somebody, you would have taken care of several members of his family. And that is significant. Now, if we create 1,500 jobs for a start, now the people would also have the opportunity to create their own jobs because they are going to be supported so that they can also do it. Now, the guinea fowl is, the, the, the guinea fowl writing is done as, as a peasant way. That is a, now you are giving people with the equipment to do it on large scale. Uh, 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 something. Anybody who has never tasted guinea fowl, if you test it, you wouldn't want chicken. You wouldn't because it's not fatty. But I know one interesting thing. The guinea fowl we eat in Accra, to a very large extent, they are fatty. Because I'm told they are being brought from Australia. Someone came and lent it, took the tin and sent there, and now they are importing the guinea fowl. About 80% of the guinea fowl we consume are not guinea fowl that are produced in Ghana. Now, if you have an opportunity to establish a company like that, that will also support several other families to be engaged in it. Already, this is their vocation. This is something that they have lived with for centuries. Now, they have an opportunity to produce on large scale. I think that we can only support this. But I think that the problem had to do with the first gentleman who appeared before the finance committee and that he didn't give us the needed, the needed information. But I believe that with the appearance of the SADA boss, everything has been brought to rest. But it's important that Kuku made one point, that Parliament has a responsibility, oversight responsibility, to monitor the kind of projects that are executed. I can quite remember, even at the committee, we resolved mm. that you don't just approve budget. Now we should have a responsibility as a Parliament to monitor the kind of project that we have approved to find out we approve this amount of money for this particular company or, in, or agency, less money is there to find out whether they have indeed. And in that sense, you would also be calling for more resources to be given to us, mm. to members of parliament to do the monitoring. 
I just hope that when such demands are made, people wouldn't say that parliamentarians are taking too much. And that is brought okay. to the point my brother made, mm. that it is not just about the cost, but the efficiency and the effectiveness. If you have very efficient and effective government, then you'll okay. be able to generate more money. Thank you. Then Thank, you. Having Thank you very much. I move to Nana Kumia, but before I do so, um, Ayarga would like to make that point himself in one minute. Good afternoon. Uh, good morning and welcome to the show, Mr. Ayarga. Uh, good morning. Okay. Uh, you're saying that you didn't attempt to prevent anybody from making any point before the speaker? No, what happened in the House was that the ranking member rose and supported the motion for the adoption of, uh, for the approval of the budget of the Ministry of Youth and Sports. And he raised the issue of corruption within the ministry. And he made reference to a Maputo report. And uh, I think it excited the House. And Mr. Speaker asked for the report, whether he had a copy of the report that he was referring to. He said he had a copy. So Mr. Speaker asked for the copy. And then Mr. Speaker looked at the copy, and then the member continued his arguments. The chairman of the committee rose and then said, yes, as chairman of the committee, he knew of the report, but that it was a preliminary finding, and the parties who have been cited in the report have been written to, to respond to the specific allegations made against them. And then when he made that statement, I then rose up, and I tried to find out from Mr. Speaker whether or not, as the Parliament of Ghana, we wanted to make the preliminary findings of an investigative body without the responses of the parties cited in those findings, whether we wanted to make such a report part of the hands up of the House. And Mr. Speaker did not even rule on that substantive question that I raised and just said that Corruption is corruption, so he, we should not even discuss that. And I said, no, I'm looking at the issue of the fairness of it. If a committee has made preliminary findings against somebody and the ministry has written to that person to respond to the findings, and then a member of parliament brings the preliminary report to the House, is citing it copiously, and uh, without the responses of the parties who are cited in them, I thought that it was a dangerous precedent. That's why I was raising that issue mm. and then wanting the direction of Mr. Speaker. But then he didn't go into it, and then we went on with the debate in the House. That was exactly what happened. I didn't attempt to block any argument about corruption mm. or anything of that sort. I just thought that as a president, we should be careful what kind of reports are accepted in the House and whether incomplete reports without the responses of persons cited in them mm. uh, should be part of the hands up in fairness to the parties who have been mentioned. Okay. You had a reaction from the speaker, didn't you? Well, I mean, yeah, of course. He, he indicated that for him uh, it was a report on corruption and he wanted the institutions that were involved to work on the matter. It was an appropriate reaction. Um, and that is exactly what the institution is doing because this report, this investigation was based on the direction of the minister. Mm. And, and, and when the report, the preliminary report got to the ministry, Elvis uh, Tuye wrote to the parties asking them to respond to right. specific findings against them. So clearly government is taking all the steps. Okay. Thank you very much, Honorable Mahama Ayarega. He is the Minister for Information and Media Relations. I, 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 I would, would take what Ayarega says. He was in the house. Oh, I was in there. Okay. I would want to look for the hand side. Mm. But the tone mm. of, of the, the speaker's speaker, reaction mm. it tells a lot of stories. Here. Okay. Nana, what's, what's your take on the, on the uh, Sada Asantaba Guinea Fowl project? <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, Samson. The, let me just try and cut to the, to the chase. Not this business about guinea fowl investment being good and all of that. We know all of that. But you see, like, the way you even put the question, now a confirming way, there's a huge credibility perception out there that something is not right. And the opposition is accused of being rash about it and getting a gullible public to buy into that perception. Let me, de let me deal with it. There's a huge perception out there that there is 
something fishy. That is why all of these jokes across radio stations making fun of this project. Kweku has called for an audit that we should find out what the arrangement is, what land has been bought, what equipment has been bought or ordered, and to ensure that what is supposed to be done with the taxpayers' money mm. is being done. All of us should support that audit. The, the equipment may not have been bought yet because they have a plan. Yes, but... A but, plan for the whole year. Yes. Each, each month, what they intend to do. There's not a problem. Mm. You see, I support public-private partnerships. And this is a public-private partnership. And the industry where the partnership is, is a good industry. Guinea fowl, meat nutrition and all of that. We import chicken that have been in cold stores for one year. So if you can get fresh guinea fowl, all of that, and with private partnership, it's all well and good. There are huge questions out there that affect the credibility of the actors involved in this joint venture. At the very least, in addition to the audit that Kweku is calling for, to establish clearly that everybody is working in the interest of, 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 the, of the public. In addition to that audit, I would call for publication of all public-private ventures in this country. The terms and conditions of every private, public-private partnership should be published. Parliament should demand the agreements. And those agreements should be published. The, the, the insecticide of sunshine should be brought to bear. When figures are given out like this, you tend to have these questions. Now confirm the way. For the integrity of the actors, the SADA itself, the private venture itself, let's go beyond the usual uh, uh, give and take. Let's take concrete action. Now, to at this moment, there's some information out there. And Koku has uh, made reference to some of the documentation and then uh, Mutala also. Are you still at that position, that that perception out there is the correct one? That there's something fishy about this deal? I don't know. I don't know whether there's something fishy. The, 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 the gentleman involved, or the, the, the Azontaba company, I know about that company. Mm. Uh, it's, it's okay, don't worry. I'm, I'm an Achim <laughs> don't from, worry. The, from, don't the, worry. from mm. the jungles of Achim <laughs> mm. <laughs> I know a little bit about that company. I've worked with them before. Mm. I have no doubt, to, I have no reason to doubt the integrity of that company. But that perception is out there. So let's take public steps to deal with it, because these are public monies. I'm saying that every PPP, I mean, you don't want ministries to publish the, 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 the contract they have with soap providers for the toilets. Mm. But you see, every PPP above a certain amount, let's publish the terms and conditions so that everybody would see. Uh, transparency will not only be talked about, but would be demonstrated. The parliament should demand it. Give me just a second. All of us let me, let me do this. Uh, let, let me just let, let me bring Ernest Thompson Let, let me just conclude. No, so just me. this point about okay. publication and auditing, as all of you seem to be calling for. Um, pff, there's a lawyer here. I want him to tell us, what do you know? By the law, this is not a government entity. They have bought shares into the company. They have uh, two uh, representatives, it, two of them, and then the other company, which has the majority uh, shares, has three. Does the state have the right to do the things that are being suggested? Let me, let, let me stop. I mean, no, no. I mean, I think, I think we should get something straight, straight away. Why don't you there, to there that are, briefly yes, and then yes. I'll come back there, to There are finish. rules of corporate governance and mm -hmm. rules governing the working of companies in, the, in, in this country under the court, right? What I would rather say to what Nana had said is that Parliament oversight responsibility cannot be taken away. And this can be handled through that mechanism. 
because he spoke of the wider picture, which I like, there are a lot of PPPs coming and the rest. We have to bear in mind that some may come in the form of foreign investors, right? And if you don't handle it very well, the rules of confidentiality in the agreements, publishing things, may also scare a lot of people away. But I think that we've got the mechanism to handle it. Okay. We voted for the parliamentarians. I'll tell you to speak to that, <laughs> that legal aspect briefly, <laughs> then <laughs> Nana Kumi will finish his point. Nana. Well, I don't know what legal impediments would be in the, in the way of transparency. I don't know what... Yeah, what at, the, at the end of the year, and then I just a second. Yeah. At the, I mean, by the company's code, yeah. there's supposed to be an AGM. Uh -huh. Accounts are supposed to be done. Auditing is supposed to be done. Mm -hmm. This is the first year of the company. Mm -hmm. We all know that the AGM may extend beyond one year. So what I'm saying is that legally, there's a procedure there already for incorporated companies, you get me, to be followed. Right. I mean, that's just the, the, okay. the, the, okay. the point so I mean. Why are saying they should go out and start publishing? What are they going to publish now? Unaudited accounts? I mean, I mean, what's the use of unaudited accounts? No, 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 no. Yeah, okay, no I'm not talking about audited sorry. accounts. But I support the audit to ensure that the things that are said to be on the ground are on the ground. All right. <laughs> but I also, I'm also saying that mm. the terms and conditions should be known. We're calling for greater transparency. Because we believe that it's transparency that will engender good governance. We know the salaries of the president. We know the salaries of my MPs uh, here, ministers of state and all of that. It brings transparency. It brings public input. It brings sunshine. So to in order not to have these questions and suspicions and jokes because of figures, mm. let terms and conditions where public money is going to be involved be published so that we know. That's all. Mm. But what do you think about uh, the Guinea Fowl project itself? I mean, it's a great project. Guinea Fowl is not some enclave industry. It's an industry that everybody can participate, right from the peasant production of 10 Guinea Fowls per household to maybe 200. So if you have a processing uh, a facility, uh, that will make sure that there's a, a demand for the Guinea Fowl. It will encourage large-scale production. So that peasant farmers can even go for loans because the banks will know that, well, if you produce 200, 300 bears, they will, they will not die on your hands. But so it's all something, good. Something, okay. But you see, the, the, let me just finish. The, the questions are being raised <coughs> because figures are being mentioned. Mm. And it is transparency. It is transparency. Everybody knows what the terms and conditions are. All right. Now, uh, something. Mr. Thompson. Yes. I mean, let's get something straight. What led to this perception? You get me? If you decide to be mischievous, you create perceptions. I listened to the MP. Three questions. He posed about three questions on the floor. Right. The first question, with all due respect to him, was a little bit mischievous. He asked the, the second. In fact, to this morning, Joy played it. He was asking information about the project. That's fine. But when you start phrasing the question as if the money had gone to purchase Guinea, you create that kind of perce uh, perception. Now, our answer to the perception is that we should publish everything. It but in this country, yeah, I, I mean, to, to, but yeah, but in this country, start publishing everything in the papers, the salary of the this thing. Then the partisan nature of this country, people now also hijack the process. Tomorrow, and the and the, the man was collecting two thousand, and two thousand dollars is too much. And, and the rest. Let's follow our rules of corporate governance. You don't right? like the aspect about publication. Is it because of the political thing that is what, brought about? What is it in the company's that... code on, on companies' accounts? Mm. The banks do publish their accounts, isn't it? If the accounts are well audited by external auditors, government has a stake in it. There's a parliamentary oversight. They will have the report. If parliament in this wisdom thinks that certain things should be put in the public domain. They have to weigh the interest of the country first. Because I'm saying that beyond this project, you can't run PPP with other foreign companies. You need, you need investments and the rest, and be publishing everything about people's salary and the rest. It doesn't happen that way in, in business, right? But let's not go and create wrong perceptions, create mysterious perceptions. It doesn't happen that way in rest. business in which the public money is in. What, whatever business you are doing, you don't start publishing salaries of people in newspapers and the rest. That doesn't solve I get the impression that. More, I get the impression more, that. The, uh, the so issue Nana so, 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 is so, so, raising, so, so, for example, more problems. if you get you, to know... You, you ask a very good mm. question. 
You ask the question, is the 15 million enough? The, que the answer will be that. Who has even read the capital structure of, of, the, the, of, the, of, the, of the investment? Yeah. To even see whether the, 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 the company will, 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 be, will, will be funded by, by both and debt and, and equity. Because at times, it's it's even better to have some debt coming debt in to, to fund the, the whole thing. Yeah. I mean, a, a project in which 50 million is meant for the whole project. And you create the impression it's, that 50 million... It's not 50 million, million that is meant for the whole project. I, I mean, 50 million... That's only that, 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 No, 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 please. Please, let's get something straight. If whatever is meant for the project, you get me? If you go and create the, the, the impression that instead of saying that this is the stated capital yeah. of the company, which they, they are going to use to import machinery, right? They can even use some to pay their own salaries. Yeah. They can also use some to, to, to do the actual purchase of the stock. If you create the wrong mischievous impression, you create a perception, right? You're not doing the country any good. And I don't expect that from a, a minister, a, 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 a member of parliament. That is my, my point. I have a problem with the, with the, with the CEO, you hear me? I think he The goofed. CEO of SADA? Oh, yeah, I think he really goofed. You get Where? Me? And Where he, did he, he goof? He should take things seriously. Where did he goof? You see, when you are going to meet a parliamentary committee, on such a project, right, you don't send somebody. No, no, they, 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 it, was, it was for a reason. We had slated a date for Yeah, them yeah to but it would have been better for him to try and speak to the committee. Himself. To, to, to try and... and this. There are certain things, a little slip. I listened to him on Joy. Yeah. When um, uh, Kojo, Spencer, Kong, or Kojo. Uh, Kojo mm. interviewed him, he wasn't so definite on the issue, so though he had the facts, and he ought to know that he has a burden the most honorable and the most demanding. So, when speaking, it should be very definite on it. In fact, he got to the extent that Kojo became a little bit even for once. I, I saw Kojo being a little bit frustrated and kept on coming hard or him trying to get the best from me. As an interviewer, I knew where Kojo was feeling now, so he should take these little things a little bit serious because he would then otherwise fall. The, the, perception. The, the perception. But I agree with what uh, Kweku said, right. that let's get the parliamentary oversight mm. work well in, in motion. Mm. I don't know now, for instance, whether to oh. require for additional funds, mm. you have to send some audited this thing and the, and the, and the rest. We, we don't know what, what, what was really happening. Samson, it's important for me to say something. When, when Nana Kumia talked about Transparency. Okay. This you do that very briefly. Listen, it's, 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 it's not secretive. A point first. It's not secretive. Mm. What what government has appropriated for you as an agency? When you appear before the the any committee for your budget for the the next financial year, mm. you appear before us. You have to tell us how you spent mm. the monies that were appropriated to you in the previous financial year. So it's not any secret. In fact, there is absolute transparency in it. Once that appeared, they indicated to us this was how much was given to us. And this is how much we have spent. You realize that the concern is not about what Seda spent in, 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 in total. Mm. The concern is about the guinea fowl, mm. the money. And you see, that is why I agree with him. That is just mischievous. Now, how can a company, the PPP that we are talking about, the private company will not appear before the committee to tell us this is how much we have and this is how we spent our money. Mm. Our interest is government's money, the 15 million that was given by government. And that was what people demanded. And you see, the surprising thing is that you had the opportunity to ask questions. Those questions were never asked. Now you come on radio and you say that you did this and you have to tell us how much you spent. I believe that the money was well spent. And I believe that the investment is there. And I agree with all of my colleagues that we, we need to be finding out, okay, these equipment that they claim they are buying, have they bought those equipments? When did they start implementing the project, or when did they commence the project? To what extent we expect this dividends? They have a plan. Point. They have a plan. Exactly. Each month they People have what they intend to do. People are not looking at the plan. Mm -hmm. People mm -hmm. are not looking at the plan. Uh, okay, we thank you. Like thank you. Plan it's, based on a, it's based on a lot of even uh, assumptions. Exactly. There are so many projects. The feasibility plan is based on assumptions. Some will change along the line, and, and so we should prepare ourselves mm. that some things will change along that. Even if you look at the tree planting yeah. project. I mean, what I, I, the information I had is that they started a project. Some also became victim of, um, um, is it bush? Bush fires. You, you know, some you know, said bush. You know, there's some risk even involved no, in all these things. No, Joy did something, yeah. and I would use this platform. Okay. Okay. I think, I think Joy went back let to, joy, to the Let science. Joy be criticized. When you granted the interview to the gentleman, he said that his information is that they were planting 5 million trees. They planted 5 million trees. Indeed, 10% of the trees were, were bent as a result of bushfire. Now, he went further to explain. 
that the company is replanting those trees at their at own expense. Own yet you yeah. don't bring that part. Oh, you why? No, but that was I, said. No, I listened to. I listened to. Your <laughs> but he this said morning. it. What did no, you I'm want coming. to say again? Listen, but, no, but, 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 you can never even have any project without some risk. Exactly. Okay. okay thank you. Let me. Let me. Let me. Let me. There was an element of force which came up along the line. Let, let me let me go to Keku. And and in fact, you in reading their document, you find that the saddest contribution actually in shares is 12 million um, equity shares in the company. The 3 million earlier was supposed to be for the training of uh, setting was out it, growers it a, and all of that. Was it a form of a sunk cost or something? It was a grant. I, I mean, we, we have to know what it was. It was a grant. Mm. I drew a distinction between what I thought the parliamentary oversight responsibility should do for us within the present circumstances because of the controversy, mm. because of the distortions and misrepresentations. In the name of accountability and transparency, I thought the Parliamentary Select Committee could double check on some of the things that we have been told are being done. And when they have a report, make a public disclosure. The integrity of the venture is itself important for even attracting further support, either from government or other sources beyond the country. It's important. That's why I said, I know that it's too early to even ask for audited accounts and mm. things. I made a point in terms mm. of the Greenfield joint venture matter. I made that point. So I okay. drew an extension. But if you go into the Act, Act 805, they have what they should do. Sundays Act. Uh, yes. What they should do, accounts and audit. It's here. It's stated mm. here. Okay. It's here. Mm. And, but see, for instance, just two points, please. The joint venture agreement, if you come to four, such that payment for shares, SADA 4.42, uh, SADA shall pay for its shares in cars as follows. An amount of 3 million Ghana cities upon the execution of this agreement. The agreement has been... The JV. Yeah. yeah. The agreement has been executed. Yeah. Yes. So it's already out there. Yes. The JV. See, yeah. like, that's so what's the problem? The agreement has been executed. Yeah. Eh? Yes. Hasn't it? Yes, it's, it has. So, no, 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 3 no. million it's Ghana cities has been paid. So, if you take it from the 15... An amount yeah. of 9 million cities within 14 days after receipt of certificate to commence business. Certificate of commence business was 5th December. Was mm. So, 15, 14 days gone. So, 9 million paid. So, it means that some expenditure has been made. What has been incurred? And the point I am making is that whilst we wait for the time frame within which audited accounts, uh, prepared accounts and should be submitted to the Auditor General for audited accounts. Mm. It's, in the it's in the interest of accountability and transparency that the integrity of this venture is rescued. Yeah. Look, the question is, no, please, okay. please. Um, No, no, yeah, but that's okay. the point. So I'm saying that the Parliamentary Select Committee, okay. what stops the committee? M Mr. Really? Mr. Thompson, what do you say also about, about those who say that, look, in, in very businesses of this nature where a lot of money is going into, what we know is that who is putting in the money staggers how much is put in. You don't just get Samson. up and take, you know, Samson. 15 can million and dump in there. See, can I you see, it depends on, on, on what you agreed as part of your JV. You get me? Because at times, because you have different people, whether 50 50 JV, 60 mm. 40 JV, you structure it in such a way that you bring some little money, the guy brings another money, then you make sure that at the end of the day, okay. you go. at times, too, in terms of the actual expense to be incurred, mm. you don't need all the finance at the same time to go and put all the money you lie in the money. Money. So you, you, you structure this. It's not new. Okay, it's done thank so you. many Koku, times. Koku, 30 seconds and we'll move on, please. The joint venture. Mm. A company, sorry, mm. has appointed over 90% of the essential staff mm. required to commence the project. Regional project coordinators for the five regions within which SADA operates are at post with the requisite logistics to facilitate their work. Further, the company agreed to appoint five specialist consultants for the project, out of which two have already been appointed. Mm. These two are Mr. Augustine A. Adongo, retired Minister of Agriculture, Director, Northern Region. Minist Mr. Emmanuel Abanzi Napsen, retired Chief Animal Health Officer. Additionally, all five, all regional office, office spaces have been acquired and are in use in the five project regions. Parliament can verify this. Mm. I believe it's true. Okay. But Parliament can verify this and put this out there. So mm. people know that the monies 
have not been used to buy a confirm for people to consume <laughs> suddenly. A confirm is just mischief. All right. Um, yeah, but, that, uh, but you are curing a mischief. Yeah, okay. And you cure mischief no, with transparency. Okay. Samuel no, Bryan, but, but the mischief Wabing, being in our has so sent in this it. text <laughs> earlier. Um, and then he says that is, is JDM government serious? How can he invest 15 million? on a confirm and GH 33 million on tree planting. Okay, he sent this in before the discussions had gone on. I guess NDC brought this budget to parliament just to steal enough money before Supreme Court threw out JDM and the NDC for stealing our votes. Uh, Alokos in Tamale writes, government must set up. The country needs a strategic and practical leadership and not merely book attitude. The audit system must work. This one says that you can only alleviate poverty through the provision of shelter, food, and clothing. And, th and, this, and this is where the concentration of SADA should be. And the partnership should be with real estate companies to build apartments in the SADA areas and also partner credit unions to give soft loans to people in these areas to build their businesses. Um, Kwame, a free year, right? I am a 20, 50 two-year-old teacher with a car, but without any allowance. Water has not flowed through my tap for the past three months. My salary is nothing to talk about. I became sick when I hear, I become sick when I hear of the misuse of state funds. Please, let your panelists advise me. Should I die for a nation like Ghana, which is being raped by the politicians? Are we trying uh, to say that we do not know that people in the north need irrigation schemes immediately than tree planting. Okay. Uh, E.K. Nohoi says, if, any, if my memory serves me right, there was a presidential initiative on guinea fowls in the last MPP government under the watch of John uh, Alan Tremanting. Where is that project? Now, uh, we, we almost ran out of time, but, but, but he's coming from the north. When the question of tree planting is said to be a misplaced priority instead of building homes and other things, something what do you say? Something it is not. In fact, the availability of trees brings about rains. And that's one thing we need to understand. The rains are already devastating the exactly. trees. Exactly. And the place is virtually becoming a desert. And once you lose sight, the, 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 the soil itself loses its fertility. It affects it. You don't have a place particular where you have one rainy season. And I think, that, and some of the trees that they are planting, they are they are commercial trees, trees that people would tap some some something from it, and which you also use as a means of livelihood. But you know why? Uh, something I have I have always talked. Everybody has talked about kai, but people are not once again asking, thirty seconds. Time people is are out. not asking themselves why this kai. I have indicated to you that there is a research is proven that majority of the young men and women who exit us. The southern part of the country to look for jobs do so during the off farm seasons. Mm. Now, if you have said, and I think that to help, Sada has, I know, has an intention of venturing into irrigation because we have one rainy season, you have dams, and I know that in this year's budget, if you look at the Ministry of Agri budget, there's okay. a, a component to that. No, no. So, the, the, the Sada is taking over the Ministry of Agri and Ministry of Housing, no, everything. Sada is everything is Sada. Sorry, sorry. But they are not. They don't seem to be bringing additional complementation. Just taking what should be going here and using it. No. Where's the additional resources that they are bringing? But you see, uh, for me, I believe that all of this falls on transparency mm. and accountability. I mean, Thompson is trying to say that there are all kinds of um, secrecy provisions and all of that. Look. JVs are brought to Parliament. STS is a joint venture. He, we've talking of monies far bigger than what we're talking about mm. today. It was brought to Parliament, and and JVs are oil companies, oil contracts, right. drilling contracts. They are all brought you. to Parliament. Thank you. Thank you very much. Gentlemen. So what's the problem? We ran out of time. What's the problem? They are not. They are not publishing. We are run out of time. We are run out of time. Another thirty seconds. You go. No, no. Parliament will go quickly. Gentlemen, 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 must they bring the joint venture? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please all the oil distance in the news. Why not? Why not? All right. This has been news file. It's a public. It's a public. Website, so it's okay. No, what I'm saying. What I'm saying is.
All right. Thank you very much. This has been News File, uh, produced by Sede Mofori, Yaya, uh, John Apia, uh, Juliana York. Uh, my name is Samson Ladia Yanini. My guest has been Abdul Malik Kubaku Jr., Motala Mohammed, Nana Komia, and Ernest Thompson. Uh, have a good afternoon. The news is up next.